Today we are going to start the manhwa known as I'm struck on the same day for a thousand years. The story starts where we get to know that the main character is stuck on the same day for his entire life like an endless loop. The time gets resets at the end of the day and the main character is reincarnated back to the same day. At first the main character felt lucky and he started to spend all his money like crazy as he will get back all his money back the next day. But soon he got bored and started venturing in the field of crime, gambling and things like that as he doesn't have to worry about the consequences as it will be reset the next day. He even gets irritated, so he tries to kill himself to end this loop but fails every time. But, at 7 am on July 7, 2020, when the main character turns a thousand years old, seems like he was telling his story to a beautiful girl in a nightclub over the bar counter. The girl in response questions him whether he actually made such a story and labels it as an old tactic. The main character assures her and speaks of his skills and also says that he'll wake up tomorrow again in the same loop even if he sleeps with her. The girl is a bit anxious at first as it's her first time meeting such a person and so texts her friend to help her dot the main character says that her friend is not going to come and says that her ex-boyfriend had come back to her life and so she is going to stay with her. The cute girl says him to stop lying to which he replies to wait for the next 9 minutes and 13 seconds after which she will receive a call. Just then, a rude guy forcefully holds the girl's hand and starts to harass her. The girl tries to let her go of the rude guy's possession but fails so, the main character interferes and asks the rude guy to come over to him. The rude guy questions the main character and quickly throws his cigarette towards the main character but the main character doesn't even flinch or doge the cigarette as it was thrown beside him to just scare him off. The rude guy is a bit shocked that the main character didn't even doge the attack, quickly rushes towards him to land a punch on his face but the main character quickly doges the attack and at the same time make uppercut punch at hit jaw and bully gets thrown away in a single punch. And just then, the main boss arrives angrily stating how dare he touches men and says he'll be a dead man now. The main character asks the bully's boss how did he grow up so fast and questions that whether this is how his elder brother Zhao taught him to be. The bully's boss is completely shocked and asks him how he knows his brother. The main character on the other hand calls the bully boss's elder brother Zhao and tells him that his younger brother was doing some bad stuff in the bar. He even goes on to say that if he doesn't want to start a war in China, then he must do what the main character said in the main meeting. He ends the calls by telling Zhao to keep his people in check else there won't be a second chance as he throws the phone to the bully's boss who then instantly apologizes for his action. The main character being in a good mood says he won't bother them. The beautiful girl is now in utter disbelief and asks herself as to who this person is. Just then the girl receives a call from her friend and her friend apologizes as she cannot come to the bar as her boyfriend came back and she quickly hags up the phone. The beautiful girl is in disbelief as the main character's words come true. The main character then asks the girl to come with him and takes her to the garage pointing to a luxurious car which is not his and he steals the car in front of the girl as he knows that the time will get reset at the end of the day. The girl questions him that he won't leave her home alone to which the man goes into Sigma mode saying he's not interested into girls who use a ton of makeup to look pretty. The girl gets angry and brings out a wet wipe and uses it over her face to show the main character that she doesn't use makeup to which she is now rated 9 tenths by the main character. The main character offers her to go to her place as he can prove he is not lying and that the bed in his house is pretty big. The girl gets cautious and says that she will call the police if anything happens to her. The next day the main character wakes up saying that he woke up the same day again and that the girl is gone. Just then the girl enters from the bathroom and says, that how come the say is not repeating to which the main character is completely shocked and the girl now demands an explanation to why is it 8th of July. The scene then shifts to a car chase where Wang's men are chasing Wu Chen and the girl who are running away in Wang's red car. The goons threaten Wu Chen to stop the car or they will kill him with a gun pointing towards them. The girl is terrified but Wu Chen says it's a fun part as he speeds up in car. Wu Chen dials an unknown number from which a woman replies hello and Wu Chen refers her as Mrs. Li and informs her that there is a traitor present in her team who can make her lose the bet. Mrs. Li is shocked and asks Wu Chen about how he knows about the bet to which Wu Chen replies that he has his own sources. 
Wu Chen says that he can also tell more about her brother but for that she has to send someone to meet him downstairs in her office within half an hour so that they can talk in person with her. Mrs. Li is curious and demands to who is she speaking to but Wu Chen is caught up in the chase being pinned down by both the cars on his side. Wu Chen makes a clean drift which amazes the goons chasing him and they are in awe of his driving skills. Wu Chen quickly makes an escape and arrives at the girl's house. The girl tell Wu Chen that she won't be asking him how he knows her house address as he will repeat his old crappy story but before leaving, she compliments his driving skills wants to know from where did he learn it from. Wu Chen being Wu Chen, replies that he practiced it through his multiple lives as he also died a lot of times while learning such driving skills and cautions her not to try it out as she only has one life unlike him. The girl is now irritated and asks him to stop lying and not expect her to call him even if he has her number now. Wu Chen drives away from the girl and the girl thinks that the night was probably arranged by her friend as Wu Chen wouldn't be knowing where she lived. She feels confident and thinks she won't let Wu Chen escape from her hands. Half an hour later we are shown a girl named Li Ruobing who is a star entrepreneur in the Donghai city but her background is very complicated as she is the sister of Wang Zhuang Yuan who can easily destroy the whole of East China and because Li Ruobing is very beautiful, Wu Chen had a deep relationship with her during his lifetime. Wu Chen then arrives in Li Ruobing's office room and she asks the guard to leave and starts to read Wu Chen's entire life summary of his education his mother and about her sister Wu Zhao who goes to a high school. Wu Chen compliments her on finding so much information about him from just his phone number. Li while tearing his information mentions that he looks like an ordinary person and an ordinary person cannot know about the bet and demands to know who Wu Chen really is. Wu Chen replies that he isn't any ordinary and that he knows a lot of things that she cares about such as the traitor who has been lurking around her. He demands $10 million to reveal the identity of the traitor making it a fair deal between them. Li Ruobing questions whether she should make a deal with a person who came out of nowhere and a person can be trusted while she quickly pulls out her gun from her drawer and points it at his head. She demands him to explain everything or she won't let him get out alive. Wu Chen replies that he knows that she will surely shoot him but then he tosses the bullet cartilage from the gun magazine in his hand. Li Ruobing is completely shocked when she sees her gun's magazine in Wu Chen's hand and wonders how he removed the magazine from her gun as it was under her table. She guesses that it was when he leaned in front of her when he came into her office. Wu Chen says that he is an intelligent businessman and it's just using his intelligence that he removed her gun's magazine. He then asks her to trust his ability to gather information and that he doesn't mean any harm to her but rather wants to earn some money. Wu Chen thinks that the only way he can let Li Ruobing lower her guard is to go around playing the card of earning money for information and soon he will be able to achieve Li Ruobing. Li Ruobing asks Wu Chen what more does he know and Wu Chen starts with her entire biography that she is the eldest daughter of the Li family but because she was treated differently as a girl. She wanted to fight and prove everyone that she can be stronger than men but still she could not escape her brother's shadow. Her mother always helped her but after their parents' divorce, she started to date other men and became a pain so, she is being forced to marry Ding Rulong. She wanted to run away from getting married, but she couldn't as she worried about her mother. So, she tried to get Ding Rulong die from her three fake boyfriends, but they all ended up failing. Her first fake boyfriend committed suicide, second one sent to a mental hospital and the third was framed and imprisoned. All this was done by Ding Rulong as he is a careful person and wants to make sure that no other man ever comes close to her. In order to escape the fate of marriage, she made a secret bet with Ding Rulong as to whoever has a bigger business after 5 years wins the bet. What she doesn't know is that Ding Rulong took someone from her side and made him to spy on her and on the launch day, that spy will ruin everything for her. Finally, after speaking so much, Wu Chen decides to stop. And at that very moment, Li Ruobing brings out her check book and writes a check of $10 million and signs it. Giving the check to Wu Chen she asks him to reveal the traitor and he calmly says he will surely tell her. A person named Feng Yan who is the senior assistant comes knocks to enter the office who requires Miss Li's signature on some documents. Wu Chen grabs the assistant's head and slams it onto her desk pointing a gun at his head saying that he is the traitor and questions the assistant what the $5 million in his Swiss bank account are for. 
The assistant completely denies of knowing anything saying they are mistaken. Wu Chen pissed off, takes his phone and dials to Ding Rulong from the assistant's phone and Ding from the other side asks whether he got the information which proved Wu Chen's point. Li Ruobing tells the assistant that he had made a lot of money over the years in every shady manner possible. But she turned her black eye as he has been working for her since a long time and she didn't think that he would sell her out for just five million dollars. The assistant accepts his mistake kneeling on the floor and starts to speak something. Wu Chen at the same moment interrupts him and says her not to believe his words as he will try to speak of her mother as it is her weak point which Ding Rulong has told the assistant. Li Ruobing is taken aback and tells the assistant to go away as she never wants to see him again. Wu Chen says that he thought she would kill the assistant, but Li Ruobing says that she didn't want to do it herself, but the assistant will be dead by the end of the day. She says that she is still suspicious of Wu Chen's identity as he can be sent by Ding Rulong and the assistant was just a mere pawn to win over her trust. Wu Chen tells her that if she is still so suspicious of him, then he has a way to prove his innocence and all she has to do is to let him be her fake boyfriend. Wu Chen speaks to Li Ruobing about how concerned Ding Rulong is about his reputation and will not still back quite if Li starts going out with him. So, by becoming her boyfriend is the best way he can prove his innocence. Li Ruobing tells him that she had three boyfriends in the past and all three got screwed up by Ding Rulong. Wu Chen knows that and says that if people want to climb higher, then having a relationship in life will make it very interesting. Li pointing a gun at his forehead admits that he is very special. He is courageous and bold but he is very young and it would be a pity as he could die and asks him isn't he afraid of this. Wu Chen says that if she really wanted to kill someone, she would have called someone in by that time and that there is nothing to be afraid of. Li Ruobing is impressed by Wu Chen and says that couples should have an intimate photo and goes on to click photos with Wu Chen. With this she can confirm Wu Chen's identity by sending a photo of them as a couple to Ding Rulong and at the same time also irritate and offend Ding Rulong. From that day onwards, Wu Chen is her boyfriend and she asks him to become her personal assistant and that she will get someone to fill the position later and wants to know what happened to her brother. Wu Chen tells that the top three clubs of China run by her brother, the East China Sea Crown, the Central China Regal and the South China Sea Plaza which everyone knows. But the East China Sea Crown has done something beyond their boundary which involves many top celebrities, rich people and officials and an investigation has begun three months ago in this matter. Wu Chen mentions that according to what he knows is that their network will be closed in another month at the most. Li Ruobing is shocked, and Wu Chen tells that it is not only her brother's problem but also troublesome for the entire Li family. Once the investigation is done, her brother will not only be sent to prison, but the Li family can abandon her brother. Li Ruobing tries to confirm it in a serious manner and asks for a surety regarding the information. The scene then shifts to the East China Sea Crown Entertainment Club where the goons are explaining of what happened during the car chase. Wang Zhuang Yuan who is Li Ruotai's right-hand man, is furious that a person had stolen their car, injured their men and even used their Li surname and questions whether the person wishes to live any longer or not. Zhao Guzai, Li Ruotai's left-hand man says that it's strange that someone would have his phone number and know about the May rally. Whereas Li Ruotai, the eldest grandson of the Li family wants to meet the person himself so that he can kill that person with his own bare hands. Just then Li Ruobing enters the room and everyone is startled by her sudden appearance. Her brother Li Ruotai tells his subordinates to put out the sum urgently as he fears and respects his sister very much and asks Li Ruobing whether there is any urgent matter as she came in person to meet him. Li Ruobing says that she has to introduce someone to him. Wu Chen then says that he borrowed his car yesterday to play and so he tosses over the car keys to him and says that the car in the underground parking has a lot of fantasy fashion. Just then the goon who chased Wu Chen yesterday shouts that this is the same person who used the Li surname yesterday. We can see that Ruotai who the eldest grandson of the Li family is actually the most favored and is able to use most of the family's power so, compared to Li Ruobing, he is really strong and his strength is also not weaker than Ding Rulong. Li Ruobing on the other hand grew up tough since she was a child as she spared no effort whether it was to protect her brother or to beat him up which also led Li Ruotai to respect and fear his sister. 
Ruo Tai was just going to speak about Wu Chen but Li Ruobing immediately pulled his ears and said him that Wu Chen is his brother-in-law. Everyone was shocked at this revelation, but Li Ruo Tai didn't believe it as she could be playing the fake boyfriend trick again and felt that Wu Chen is also an ordinary person. He asks her of a reason to be with Wu Chen. Li Ruobing starts acting up and says that she is not feeling well lately and leans on Wu Chen's chest and says Wu Chen that it's all his fault. Wu Chen asks her that, isn't she going too far with her drama and says that he isn't afraid of Ding Rulong. But, Li Ruobing's brother is completely stunned seeing Wu Chen and her sister so close to each other like a couple. Li Ruobing's brother, Li Ruotai, the eldest son in the Li family is completely shocked seeing his sister Li Ruobing and the young man Wu Chen so close. Seeing them so close, he thinks as to whether his sister Li Ruobing pregnant with Wu Chen being the child's father. Li Ruotai seeing his sister and Wu Chen so close thinks that Wu Chen is just an average guy in terms of his looks. Neither the most handsome man nor a bad looking man. So, he gets suspicious as to why is his sister going out with an average young man like Wu Chen who is in his early 20s whereas her taste is clearly in men older than her age. Li Ruotai gets concerned for her sister thinking that maybe Wu Chen is deceiving his sister and wants to use her by making her fall in love. As, according to him, love can sometimes make people completely blind and make them so crazy that then think nothing except love. Li Ruotai being concerned is now desperate to save his sister from the young man Wu Chen. So, he questions them on when did the two of them meet. Wu Chen replies that they both met three months ago when his sister was recruiting interns at a university which amazes Li Ruobing as even though she did recruit interns at a university, she wonders as to how does Wu Chen know about it. Li Ruotai tries to bring some sense into his sister's mind telling that she has only known Wu Chen for only three months and reasons that in such a short amount of time how she could know everything about Wu Chen to make him her boyfriend. Li Ruotai now questions Wu Chen about his men informing him about Wu Chen being with another girl in the Lotus Bar the day before. Li Ruobing is shocked that Wu Chen was with another girl but Wu Chen clarifies it to clear any misunderstand that the women he was in the club the previous night was Mu Qian Qian who is the daughter of Mu Sihai and they are the owners of the East China Sea Mu Biomedical Group. Wu Chen says that Li Ruotai should in fact, thank him as if he had not intervened and saved the girl last night in the club from Lu Hu Zai and his men for trying to bully and harass her, the girl would have become a huge problem for everyone that no one including Li Ruotai could stop. We get to know that, the East China Sea Mu group is the leading biomedical group in the region and Mu Sihai, the girl's father is worth billions of dollars who is also the deputy to the National People's Congress with a lot of contacts within the party. Wu Chen tells him that if in case they had a war against the Mu group, even if the Li family won, they still would have to pay a huge price at the event. Li Ruotai realizes the grave danger he was saved from. Thanks Wu Chen for the help. Li Ruobing is impressed with Wu Chen as he could subdue her brother who is a person who is not even afraid of anyone with just a few words. She then stops the matter and tells them that she came for something important to discuss with them. She tells Li Ruotai that someone from the higher up wants to move the crown club's control from the Li family which makes everyone present in the room shocked at what she said. Li Ruotai himself is very shocked at this revelation and tries to deny it telling her that he himself had taken care of everything in that matter and he would have known about the matter the very instant if it was the case. Wu Chen corrects him stating that he should not have blackmailed the people with the video he had taken and should have cut all his business relations with Xie Hu a long time ago. Li Ruobing is very furious on her brother as even after advising him multiple times that Xie Hu is not a good person. He is still in touch with Xie Hu and is working with him. Li Ruotai tries to calm his sister and tells her that he could explain everything to her but Wu Chen tells him that his sister Li Ruobing is correct in this regard as Xie Hu is not a good person and that Xie Hu has sold him out this time to the higher authorities. He tells that Xie Hu will put all the blame onto Li Ruotai and frame him stating it as Li Ruotai's idea. Li Ruotai is startled as even his sister is unaware of his business with Xie Hu and demands Wu Chen to tell him about who told him about his business with Xiu Hu. Wu Chen shrugs it off and tells that he is only there for his sister Li Ruobing and not for him, 
So he doesn't have to clarify about anything to him and he will only help him because he is Li Ruobing's brother and if something happens to her brother, she will get very sad. Li Ruotai gets very angry over Wu Chen's statements and threatens that Wu Chen won't be able to walk out alive of the club if he doesn't explain him about how he knew about Xie Hu and his business. Li Ruobing tries to calm down her brother, but Li Ruotai tells her that he doesn't care if Wu Chen lied to her, but he won't believe in any of Wu Chen's words as he seems like a liar who cannot even speak his words clearly. Wu Chen starts to explain that only a few people in China know about the matter. It is only four months ago that a person who was parachuted into the East China Sea Police Department named Liao Bo came across to handle the Crown Entertainment case. Some investigators had disguised themselves as guests to go undercover while other investigators lurked into the clubhouse and so have collected a lot of evidences against them. He then writes some names on a piece of paper informing Ruotai that it is the list of all the undercover agents regarding the case and hands it over to him. Li Ruotai reads the names and immediately orders his men to buckle up and investigate all the men present in the list and he also warns Wu Chen that it will be Wu Chen's fault if the names in the list he gave are wrong. Wu Chen calmly goes and sits down at the sofa demanding Li Ruotai of the amount of money they are willing to spend to know the entire information regarding the matter. A little later we see Li Ruotai checking a camera in his hand where he is seen very frustrated as he orders his men to capture all the people in the list at that very moment. Li Ruotai is in utter disbelief and he cannot digest the fact that there are so many spies in his club. Wu Chen cautions them as the spies cannot be captured and that even if one of the spies goes missing, the cops will start acting up as the cops have collected enough evidence against the casino-related things and so. Li Ruotai asks Wu Chen for a solution in this regard. Wu Chen asks him whether he wants to proceed the old way looking for getting jailed or whether he wants to get out of the mess safely. Upon further insisting by Li Rulong, Wu Chen tells him not to send any of his men anywhere and also apologize to him so that he can fix up everything for him. Wu Chen thinks that maybe he should show some respect to Li Ruotai as now he has become the part of their family. Li Ruobing tells Wu Chen to help her brother as they are a family. Wu Chen tells that her brother doesn't consider him as his family. Li Ruotai has no other option. So, he accepts it saying that Wu Chen sees him in the wrong way and as he sees Wu Chen as a part of his own family. Wu Chen giggles out and we see Li Ruotai apologizing to Wu Chen saying that he thought that Wu Chen was cheating his sister and so was a bit hesitant. Wu Chen tells that he isn't cheating on his sister and tells that just for the sake of his sister, he is going to give him an idea. Wu Chen tells, firstly, Li Ruotai has to kill Xie who is Xu who knows a lot of things and their plan can get ruined if he speaks up. He tells, Xie who often goes to Villa No. 17 in the Lotus Pond Manor to do Drew S with his mistress. So, if Xie who dies of an overdose, Li Ruotai won't be suspected of Xie Hu's death. Li Ruobing is all cheered up and mentions it as a great idea. Wu Chen continues with the second step, which is to destroy the evidence which is in Liao Bio's hand. For which he just has to get the evidence and destroy it. Ruotai tells, he will get Liao Bio and Wu Chen asks is whether he's crazy because Liao Bio is too big of a person to be taken down. He explains that in a locality called Willow Street, in the 2nd Avenue's Unit 3, there is room number 501. Within that room, under the master bedroom closet is a hidden safe. The password to the safe is 571,564 and the evidence is inside that safe. He further tells, that since the investigation was a top secret mission, they have only one main file in order to prevent leaks. So, if they destroy that evidence, they will be good to go. Ruotai is started at such a detailed information that too with the password to the safe. Wu Chen mentions the third step to tell the head of the family about this matter and most importantly, his business with Xie who with utmost clarity as they are talking about the Wei family now. We get to know that Li family and the Wei family had been hostile for many years with both sides being in a full-scale war for once. This also lead many people from both the sides to get prisoned. This is also the reason why the Li family wanted to get Li Ruobing to get married into the Ding family in order to join forces with them as the Wei family has an upper hand over the Li family.
He tells them to let the Wei family seize the opportunity as they would take advantage to fight with the Li family and to overcome the troubles the head of the family must know about it. Ruotai unwillingly accepts to Wu Chen but Wu Chen isn't finished yet and continues his final move. He tells to set fire to the crown club. A little fire that can make it to the news so that he can justify shutting down the club for redecorating without getting suspected. Wu Chen guarantees that Li Ruotai will be safe if he does all the four things he mentioned. Li Ruobing grabs her brother's ears and asks him whether he understood what her boyfriend said or not. Li Ruotai tells her to stop as he has understood everything and will do what Wu Chen said to him. Suddenly, Li Ruotai's phone rings and upon attending the call, he is shocked as his dealer has lost over 2 billion to a customer in the casino. Li Ruotai tries to take a leave from Wu Chen and his sister to go to the casino urgently but, Wu Chen questions him whether it is Shen Gongjin who is the owner of the Fusheng Aluminum. We then see Wu Chen telling about Shen Gongjin that Shen had arrived in the East China Sea the day before and had purposely cleared all the gambling experts from the city of Macau so that he could take revenge of his previous shame. He tells that they are screwed as status doesn't matter in the casino since Ruotai's and Xie whose business relied on people to cheat people in the gambling game. The casino works like that on letting people win at first and latter make the player lose everything. Shen Guangjin had also lost several hundred millions in the casino leading financial trouble in his company. So, in order to solve the issue, he raised money from other people and got to know that other people had also lost a lot of money like him. So, he went to the Wei family for the help and when Wei family did their investigation, they found out the secretly filmed tape and the Wei family seized the opportunity with others to bring down the Li family. Wu Chen informs that under normal conditions, Shen would have not dared to challenge them by bringing a gambling expert to the casino, but he isn't afraid as he knows that Li Ruotai is finished with the issues he is facing. Li Ruotai is furious on Shen Guangjin threatening to take revenge on him sooner or later. We are then shown Shen and his expert playing at a table and they again defeat a player in the game. Shen seems to be enjoying the game and getting richer at the same time. Ruotai and team arrives congratulating Shen on having a good hand during the games. Shen tauntingly asks that Mr. Li won't mind since he has won a lot of money today but Ruotai shrugs it off labeling it as very little money and he can afford to lose that. Shen mockingly tries to tell Ruotai that the experts in the crown club couldn't win against him and it seems that he has brought a little talent under him to defeat him. Wan Chen denies it and asks whether he would like to play a few games with him as well. Shen laughs it off mentioning whether Mr. Li is trying to be modest by sending a youngster to play against him in the game. He adds, saying how embarrassing it is for the Li family to keep going on even after losing 200 million against him. Ruotai asks Li Ruobing whether Wu Chen is skilled in gambling as well but she denies knowing about his skills. We get to know that gambling masters are good at guessing the psychology of their opponents through minimal expressions and their movements. It requires a great amount of experience in the game which young people cannot possess. Shen's expert feels that he can accurately guess Wu Chen's card by just looking at his expressions. Ruobing tries to confirm from Wu Chen if he wishes to gamble and Wu Chen without any hesitation tells her that he can defeat any casino in the world. The game begins and we see Shen's expert noticing Wu Chen not looking at the concealed cards. Wu Chen bets for 500,000 and the expert seems to call the same. We see this happening through multiple round, and we see Wu Chen winning the rounds. Ruotai takes no time mocking back Shen for the expert he hired seems to be running out of his luck. Shen is trying praise Li as he tries to lower Li into his trap. It is seen that Shen and his expert intentionally lose a few games in the beginning to observe the opponent's habit and analyze their opponent's way of thinking and then incentivize them finally taking it all back from the opponent. Shen knows that since Li Ruotai has lost more than 200 million already, they will not refuse to continue playing to recover their losses and they will certainly add more chips from the casino side to Wu Chen to win the game. It is round 30 now and the dealer requests to place their bets and Wu Chen goes for 1 million this time without looking at his cards. Wu Chen goes in for another million and the expert goes all in since he thinks that Wu Chen has a very bad hand and he has a pair of kings, it's almost a win for the expert. 
Ruotai sees that Wu Chen has a better probability to win but is unsure since the final card is not yet revealed. Wu Chen goes all in but the expert wishes to add another hundred million as there is very little money on the table. Wu Chen being confident raises it to 200 million instead. Ruotai hints the employees to bring the chips to the table and Wu Chen raises the bet by 100 million. The expert observes that Wu Chen's finger position seems that the card is a very important one. Therefore, that card can be an ace which can make the expert loose. So, he folds his bet trying to mock Wu Chen for not listening to his advice. Ruobing tries to guess whether it is an ace but Wu Chen denies it revealing it as the two of hearts. The expert is very furious as Wu Chen had tricked him but Wu Chen denies it saying the expert didn't keep up with the bet. The expert has grasped another one of Wu Chen's tactics in the meanwhile and we see round 31 in play. The expert's bottom card is a 9 of diamond and since both their hands have the same value of cards, unless Wu Chen's bottom card is a 9 of spades, there is not way Wu Chen could beat the expert. But, since the probability of all four nines coming out in one game is very low and Wu Chen doesn't often looks at his bottom card, the expert seems very confident in winning the round. He proposes it to be the round to determine the winner and bets 200 million going all in. Wu Chen seems unmoved and bets the same. We see everyone getting tensed over the table due to the sheer amount of the bet on the table. Li Ruobing questions whether going all in for 200 million is a bit risky and her brother consoles her saying that since Wu Chen has been lucky so far, he sees no problem at the moment. The expert also goes all in and advises Wu Chen that the most important thing while gambling is to not lose his mind. Because if he cannot control his mind, he won't be able to go too far. He confidently plays his card and mocking asks whether Wu Chen considers himself as the god of gambling that he bets without even looking at the hidden cards properly. With this he joyfully tries to claim that the 200 million is now his. Everyone is shocked as they think the game is now over since the expert has the guaranteed win. Shen teases Li that they won't mind losing such a small amount since they are a very big family since Li had mentioned it earlier when he met Shen. Li could only accept this without replying but Wu Chen taunts as to if they are all done and to see the final card in his hand for themselves. The expert is all tensed up and as he snatches the card from Wu Chen's hand, he is terrified at seeing the nine of spade as Wu Chen has now won the bet. He tells since it is impossible to read the cards. He asks as to when did he read the cards? Wu Chen asks whether they really thought that Wu Chen didn't look at the cards and explains that he had been checking his cards every time since the first game. He looked at the cards without their notice. He tells that the expert is a good player but just a too egoistic that he thinks that really figure out his opponent by just playing a few hands just like how he tried with Wu Chen and whether his flaw was really a flaw and whether his moves were habitual that even for a split second he didn't think that Wu Chen could be trying to fool him. He reveals that he had been controlling the entire game since the beginning in which the expert fell as a prey. Ruotai exerts pressure on Shen telling him that Shen must be in big trouble since all the money he used were borrowed from others. Shen couldn't believe the situation and orders the expert to walk outside to talk. Wu Chen interrupts them questioning them as to where they are going. Shen asks Li whether this is how they treat guests and whether they are not allowed to leave the club after losing. Ruotai asks Wu Chen for a reason but Wu Chen instead requests for a knife to explain everything to them. When moves with the knife towards the expert grabbing the expert's playing hand and just then the ace of black card falls from within the sleeve of his shirt. He tells the expert that Wu Chen had already noticed that the expert had hit a card up his sleeves when he requested for a card check before the 15th game and he didn't want to expose him then because he hadn't want then. Ruotai is furious on the expert as he dared to cheat in front of him and asks Shen for an explanation. Before the expert could speak, Wu Chen pins the expert on the table with force and stabs his playing hand with the knife mentioning him to suffer the consequences of his actions. The expert is seen in immense pain holding his wounded hand but Wu Chen is unmoved and asks Shen about it. Shen says that he didn't order the expert to cheat and tells the incident has nothing to do with him. Wu Chen informs that he will head out to take some rest and cautions Ruotai to not take any step within the clubhouse. 
Li Ruobing is very happy as she asks how Wu Chen feels after stabbing the expert's hand. Wu Chen denies liking it stating that it will feel the pain as when one stabbing their own hand. Li Ruobing thinks of what a monster Wu Chen is that even after stabbing someone, he is still so calm and whether he could even kill someone if that were to be the case. We see Wu Chen and Li Ruobing traveling in a car where Miss Li is praising Wu Chen for being so good in cards. But Wu Chen being Wu Chen reminds her not to forget to pay him money. Wu Chen observes something and looks outside the car window. When Ruobing asks, he tells her that a car is following them. Soon, she is informed the same by her driver. Li Ruobing tells the driver to get rid of the followers as it must be Ding Rulong's men who sends people to follow her everywhere. Wu Chen knows that it wasn't Ding Rulong and their target was not her but Wu Chen himself. He lays his hand onto hers and comforts her by telling that she need not worry as he would take care of everything. Miss Li thinks that Wu Chen is using this as an opportunity to hit on her but also is impressed as it was a very good move as well. She tells him maybe Wu Chen is hungry and she would give him something good for his help during the day. We see them sitting in a restraint checking out the menu whereas Wu Chen is concerned that people might think of him as their competitor, but she denies telling she wants others to know more about him. We see a gentleman greeting Miss Li who is Mr. Han Deli, the chairman of the Longcheng Innovation Group. She tells him that she is there to eat with her boyfriend as her boyfriend wanted to eat Cantonese food and so she brought him here. Mr. Han introduces himself to Wu Chen and compliments him saying that he is a good-looking man so is the perfect match for Miss Li. Wu Chen thanks him for his compliments and Mr. Han apologizes to interrupt their date taking a quick leave informing that his client has arrived. Ruobing tells that Han Deli is a nice guy and like to make new friends. In addition to it, he is an officer of the East China Sea Chamber of Commerce but Wu Chen tells her he doesn't need her instructions as he knows him better than her. He tells that it seems many people do not want to be friends with her and she confirms it because she has a lot of rivals, especially women who envy her a lot. We see a girl who accidentally meets Ruobing in the restaurant and questions her about when did she start to have a boyfriend. She is Liu Keishu, formerly known as Liu Lijuan. She is 32 years old and is from the Lijuan village from the Irma County in Donghai City. She is married since 7 years with Lu Ganian who is the chairman of the Danghai Julie Group and even has a son since then. With the help of her husband she set up her own business Yangshu Fashion Company and is a competitor to Li Ruobing's company. Liu Keishu mocks Li Ruobing that since she is 27 years old, the young man in the 20s which whom she is, she seems like an old cow eating a young grass. Ruobing tries to defuse the situation by considering it as a joke and tells her to stop with her act. Liu Keishu asks whether she still cares to what other people say and Robing gets very angry telling her to stop and was going to just throw her coffee but Wu Chen stop her by grabbing her hand telling to chill for a moment as he will solve it for her. He walks near to the women and tries to analyze her making faces. The girl is irritated and asks as to why is he looking her like that. Wu Chen tells her that it's nothing but Tati has seen her before somewhere. Wu Chen tells that he remembers it asking her whether she worked in a nightclub before. Lu Keishu is very furious and slams the table with her right hand. In complete anger, she emphasizes the word nightclub and tries to belittle Wu Chen saying his whole family would have worked in nightclubs. She asks how dare Wu Chen slander her by referring her to working at a nightclub and does he know who she is. Wu Chen mocks her asking whether she is accusing him of slandering her and whether she knows that her past cannot be erased by putting on a facelift. Lu Keishu is taken aback by how Wu Chen knows about her been worked in nightclubs and also that she had plastic surgery as it was 10 years ago and no one should be knowing about it. Li Ruobing enters the chat and praises Wu Chen for even having such in-depth information about her and that his intelligence network is better than what she had thought about. Wu Chen tells her that it is too early to admire him as the best part is yet to come. We see Lu Ganian who is the chairman of the Donghai Julie Group and the vice president of the Donghai Chamber walking towards them and asking Keishu about the matter. She hurriedly walks towards her husband and tells him that Wu Chen has insulted her and said her that she worked in a nightclub. She asks him to take revenge on Wu Chen for insulting her.
Lu Ganian asks Li Ruobing about who is the guy with her. Ruobing tells her that he is her boyfriend named Wu Chen. Ganian tells Wu Chen that since Ganian is a respected person in Donghai and since he has humiliated his wife, it is equal to slapping Ganian's face and so the matter cannot be solved with just a few words. Wu Chen tells him that there is someone who can solve the matter for him. Lu Ganian questions him whether he thinks that Ganian won't do anything just because he is with Li Ruobing. Wu Chen tells that he is not talking about Li Ruobing but is talking about Ma Huifang. Lu Ganian is completely terrified hearing the name from Wu Chen and asks him if he knows her. Li Ruobing wonders as to what's with Ganian's terrified reaction to Wu Chen's reply. In the meanwhile, Wu Chen requests Mr. Lu to have a small talk with him for a minute in a corner. Mr. Lu accompanies Wu Chen and Wu Chen tells him that he has two stories to tell to him. He tells that the main character of the first story is her wife. It is that ten years ago, she was encouraged by her then husband to enter a nightclub to make quick money for herself. During this time, she met a very wealthy customer in the nightclub. The customer had started a demolition business and when the person was young, he had a dispute with someone. When the person was released from the hospital, he got to know that it will be difficult for him to have children in the future. The person wasn't able to have children since then and even vitro fertilization was unsuccessful in his case. The doctor had said about this when the person was drunk and when Lu Lijuan got to know about it, she started with her evil plan. She got her facelift and changed her name to Lu Keishu and with the help of her then husband, she became the person's wife. Three months later, she got pregnant, and a baby boy was successfully born. Of course, it wasn't the client's child but the child of Lu Keishu and her then husband. She knew that Ganian could ask for the paternity test, so she bribed a hefty amount to the doctor to lie about it. Wu Chen tells Mr. Lu that even Mr. Lu would have known that the child does not look like him and that he is just trying to deny the reality because he is eager to have a child. The final part of their plan was to get him to die in an accident and inherit the billions of dollars he had in his possessions. Lu Ganian is surprised but denies that he cannot believe the mere words that Wu Chen spoke. Wu Chen tells that his wife's cousin is in his company and that the cousin is her concubine in reality. He warns Mr. Lu that the two of them together are still cheating on him. He explains that Lu Keishu went out with her lover the day before in the afternoon to have an affair. She deliberately took the stairs to avoid the people. He hints to Mr. Lu to check the surveillance cameras to check it himself. Or, he can ask his wife about it but, to know the truth, he would have to swindle about the matter a bit. Mr. Lu goes towards his wife and asks whether she was with her cousin at the office the day before or not. She replies affirmatively and tells that she was in the office until the end of the day. Mr. Lu tells that his cousin told him that they both went outside to talk to a client and were not in the office. Lu Keishu says that maybe her cousin said it by mistake. Mr. Lu instead tells her that he should rather call her cousin to know about it instead. But, Lu Keishu hurriedly stops Mr. Lu from calling her cousin and tells that she remembers that they did go out in the afternoon to talk to a client, but they came back around 2 or 3 and were there in the office the rest of the day discussing about the promotions. She questions why is he asking her such questions all of a sudden while the young boy is scolding her and whether he loves her and his son or not. Lu Ganian is angry at her and slaps her on her cheeks telling her to shut up as he has discovered the scandal between her and her cousin. Lu Ganian is in a rage as he orders Lu Keishu to leave immediately as he will talk to her later. He apologizes to Wu Chen and Ruobing about the incident and Wu Chen and Li Ruobing both assure Mr. Lu that they won't tell anyone about the matter. Mr. Lu tells that he just wanted to have a child and didn't know that he would be used like that for it. Mr. Lu seems to have lost all hope as he accepts his fate of being unable to have a child but, Wu Chen denies it informing him that Mr. Lu has a very good son. Mr. Lu is shocked on hearing about it as Wu Chen tells Mr. Lu that he still has the second story left. There was a couple who were childhood friends and one day they fell in love with each other. Both of them thought that now they can spend their lives together living happily. The man soon became wealthy and because of that eventually cheated on her partner. He ran away with his new lover with all his money unknown to the fact that his wife was pregnant. 
His ex-wife later gave birth to a boy and she even had to cut off from her parents from getting ashamed of having a child from their relationship. The woman was treated like an untouchable but she still raised her child facing all the difficulties on her own. It is out of her hatred that she told her child that his father is dead. Her son has a successful career and started his own family of four, living happily. Wu Chen tells that he can indeed have children and also has a granddaughter. Mr. Liu is delighted and wants to know the name of his son and Wu Chen tells him that his son is named Ma Jiu Wei after his mother's name. Mr. Liu is concerned as his wife didn't marry any other women and gets to know that his wife doesn't trust men anymore after what happened to her. Wu Chen tells that she lives in Donghai and must have come to know that he became rich. But she never looked at him because it hurts her too much to see him. We see Wu Chen getting something out of his shirt pocket and he brings out a piece of paper informing that his wife's address is in the paper and it is all upon Mr. Liu to find out whether she has forgiven him or not. Mr. Liu gladly accepts the paper and tells Wu Chen that if he can get back with his wife, he will owe a favor to Wu Chen. Ruobing is impressed as she tells that Mr. Liu now owes him a favor and he replies stating that it's a good thing as Mr. Liu can be useful in the future. We are then seeing Wu Chen leaving the car at night telling Ruobing that he will see her the next day. But she calls out to Wu Chen to come back to her as she has something to tell him. Wu Chen goes to the car window and asks about it as she grabs his shirt pulling him over for a kiss. She tells him that Ding Rulong likes to send over people to spy on her, so she wants to bully them. Wu Chen being a sigma, leaving everything aside asks whether it is her first kiss as he tells her that her technique is very brutish making his mouth hurt, and leaves shortly after. We are then shown an apartment during the night where two women are talking to each other. These two girls are Lily and Miu Qian Qian, the girl at the bar. She tells her friend Lily that she is hungry and they should go eat something but her friend denies telling her that they need to wait for the young boy she met. Miu Qian Qian tells her friend that she wanted to do what she did that day which makes her friend furious at her as she got brainwashed by a young man and she can't let that guy off so easily. Miu Qian Qian asks whether it was she who told about her to Wu Chen and how did he know so much about her. Her friend is very furious letting her know that she didn't tell anything to Wu Chen and that the most important thing right now is to beat up that pervert. Miu Qian Qian regrets asking about Wu Chen from her friend as she just wanted to know about Wu Chen and didn't expect her friend's reaction to being like this. We then see Wu Chen walking entering the corridor where Miu Qian Qian and her friend are talking. Miu Qian Qian tells her friend that he is Wu Chen and Wu Chen tells them that he is there. Her friend Lily boldly asks Wu Chen, how could he cheat on Miu Qian Qian and that he is a horrible person? Wu Chen in return asks how come she has so much courage to come at him so boldly if she knew Wu Chen was such a bad guy. As he goes into his pocket trying to get something, her friend gets cautious and warns Wu Chen to stay away. But, Wu Chen just pulls out his door keys and tells that he has to open his door. Lily is agitated as Wu Chen ignored her and she was just going to tase Wu Chen but Wu Chen calls out to her not to attempt anything on him. While opening his door, he tells her that Hu Xiaowei is cheating on her. He tells that when Hu Xiaowei went back to Donghai four days ago, he first went to see his lover who lives in Unit 201 on 19th Fuyin Road, and after that went to KVT with his friends for a few days. Since he ran out of money yesterday, he came back to her. Lily questions as to whether it is true trying to show she does not believe it. Wu Chen tells her to check it herself by calling him and trying to get the information by other means. Lily being arrogant, tells that she knows men better than him and she will call her boyfriend immediately and prove him wrong. Lily calls her boyfriend and asks about his whereabouts telling him that there is $10,000 in his room drawer. He tells her that he is home and when he gets to know of the money, he tells her that he is unaware of the money and will about it in half an hour to her. Lily rushes in anger as she now knows that her boyfriend is cheating upon her as he is not back home and she will beat him to death. Miu Qian Qian tells her to wait for her as she also wants to join her but Wu Chen grabs Miu Qian Qian by her waist and lifts her with both his hands and asks her that since she is here, doesn't she want to come into the house? Miu Qian Qian asks Wu Chen, why did he pick her up and Wu Chen goes smoothly telling a princess shouldn't get tired, referring to her. 
She yells at him to put her down as she can walk by herself but Wu Chen continues to walk lifting her as she continuously yells at him to put her down. <laughs> yeah, boy. The scene shifts to the next day morning where we see Wu Chen getting up and sitting on his bed and taking a quick stretch noticing Miu Qian still sleeping on the bed. He asks why is she still sleeping as it is morning. She shouts at him telling him that she didn't get enough sleep because of him and she needs to have her beauty sleep. A paper ball flies over to her side thrown by Wu Chen who tells her that it is his phone number. She can call him if she wants to meet him and doesn't have to just wait outside the house for him to return. She is happy and tells him that it's all the same that is waiting for him to return. We see a masked man in a car following Wu Chen as he gets out of the apartment. Wu Chen notices the guy and then calls someone using his phone. He asks the person on the phone, whether he sent someone to follow him for the day and whether he is still not done. He tells that he is going for training and to visit him on the training grounds to find him. Sometime later we see Wu Chen training. He had mastered the fighting techniques in the past thousand years but his physical fitness isn't good enough and he has to train even more as he has offended Ding Rulong and doesn't know what kind of troubles he will face in the future. We see Wang Zhuang Yuan who is Li Ruotai's right hand man coming up to visit Wu Chen. Wu Chen notices Wang coming up to visit him. We get to know that before, Wang was just a second rate. But because he and Li Tai climbed the ranks of connections, he gained power and was able to expand his influence. In just a few years, Wang became one of the four bosses and the youngest to become one. The four bosses control 90% of the entertainment industry in the East China Sea and are even involved in businesses such as quarry and logistics. Wang nervously tells Wu Chen that he has something to explain to him and that Wu Chen misunderstood him. The person he sent to follow him was to ensure their safety and not for ill intention. Wu Chen tells that Li Ruotai probably doesn't know about Wang sending men to follow him in Ruobing. And since Ruotai is very protective of his sister, if he gets to know about Wang following them, Wang will get screwed. Wang is sweating heavily unable to gulp down realizing what Wu Chen meant. Wu Chen comforts him telling him to relax and if he really wanted to tell Ruotai about Wang, he would have done have not called Wang. Wang asks Wu Chen what he wants in return. Wu Chen calmly tells that he wants to be friends with him. Since he has a lot of subordinates. So, if he is short on manpower, he will ask for his help. Wang is relieved and assures him that he would definitely help him and Wu Chen doesn't have to hesitate to ask for help in the future. Wu Chen thinks that even though he has a lot of information since he is short on manpower, things will get a lot easier now with Wang's help. Wu Chen gets a phone call from Li Ruobing. When Wu Chen answers the phone, she asks him to come to her quickly as something has happened in the company. Wang hands over his car keys to Wu Chen informing him that he has extra pair of clothes as well to change. And if Wu Chen doesn't mind, he would give this as an apology and Wu Chen can use it as his transport in the future. Wu Chen accepts it happily saying it since Wang doesn't mind giving the car to him. We are shown the office, where everyone is worried, trying to contact every other person. Wu Chen enters Ruobing's office where she is talking over the phone asking for someone's health and whether that person can attend the press conference or not and then hangs up after confirming the situation. Wu Chen asks her about the matter and whether something happened. Ruobing informs that their product spokesman who is a new generation female singer, Dang Zunya has met with a car accident. Wu Chen tells that he helped her yesterday find the traitor and since Ding Rulong found out that they could not steal the information, it seems that they got Miss Dang into an accident so that she could not speak for the new product of the symphony fashion and this obviously is not a coincidence. Ruobing is sad that Ding Rulong did such a thing and he even violated the rules of their bet and even used his family's influence. Wu Chen on the other hand asks whether she wants him to help her find a new spokesperson. She asks that she does need a spokesperson and whether did he find someone for the job? Wu Chen asks whether a national first class movie star with the Golden Horse Award, the Golden Image Award, and the Golden Rooster Hundred Flowers Film Prize, Tao Man Ying qualified for the position. Ruobing mocks him saying that such a popular movie star would never even meet them let alone be their product spokesperson. She knows that he is trying to help but he shouldn't bluff her like this. Wu Chen places a bet on the same since she doesn't believe him. 
a bet whether he can get Tao Munying to show up in their office tomorrow morning to sign a contract with them. We get to know that Tao Munying is a popular first-class actress who was also the first one to enter the ranks of international film stars by sweeping the awards of every major film festival with her major production, The Sword and Autumn Water. She has been receiving many endorsements since then, becoming one of the highest paid actresses in China. Ruobing questions him whether he is saying that he would sign a contract with Tao Munying the next morning and whether he is joking as she is now filming abroad and has multiple makeup endorsements to do, so it isn't possible. Wu Chen is adamant telling her to bet on if she doesn't believe him and she readily accepts to make him leave her alone. Wu Chen wants to tell that if he fails to get the contract signed by the next morning, he would pay her $20 million. But, if he wins, $20 million will be very less for the endorsement he will get her and she can't be jealous if he wins. Ruobing wants to know why would she be jealous as they are just pretending to be a couple and she is not in love with him. She tells him to find whoever he likes as she has no right or interest in interfering in his life. Wu Chen seals the deal for the bet going to take a leave but then tells her to put 20 million in his account, hinting that he has already won making Li Ruobing very irritated. Wu Chen comes out of the office calling someone and asking for a favor. We see Wu Chen and Wang walking into a gaming cafe. Wang informs him that all of the men are his brothers who are good at gaming and asks what he wishes to do. Wu Chen tells everyone to turn on their PCs and play the legendary City Lords mentioning a specific version. He instructs him to get all the players registered and go to the third area that opened at 5 o'clock the day before yesterday and use a specific name. We see a panel asking for the name, then he tells everyone to wait in the new player area and recharges his id with $10 million. He recharges it to build a clan waiting for someone to arrive. Four hours later, we see them playing the same game. The players are all hyped up as they have never played with an account with hundreds of thousands of credits in their game id. They have defeated multiple monsters and cleared multiple levels. Wang tells that their clan has suppressed the biggest clan in the server and now has become the biggest clan which has cost them more than 8 million for the levels and equipment. Wu Chen tells him that there are no more casual players on the server and other small clans have quit the game and all that remains on the server is the Dragon Slaughter clan. He tells Wang that it is time to activate the second step of his plan. We see a message popping up informing every player that the King of Hegemon has started the battle against the Dragon Slaughter telling everyone to gather at the main city square. We see everyone fighting in the main city square. Wu Chen tells them to gather at the Chiku Square and prepare for the battle with the Dragon Clan. Another person from the Dragon Clan compliments Wu Chen for making so much fortune in the game telling that maybe Wu Chen is a diehard fan of the game. The person tells that it is still not clear who will win since both clans have similar power. Wu Chen on the other hand tells that the winner will be decided very soon making. The person asks Wu Chen about how he plans to win but Wu Chen denies it stating that the Dragon Clan will win making the person shocked. Wu Chen orders everyone from his clan to listen to his order and remove their equipment and get off the game. We see everyone getting off the game which makes the person shocked as he begs like a little kid to Wu Chen to play more with his clan as it is very difficult for them to find an opponent like Wu Chen. He tells that Wu Chen has spent $9 million in the game and if he quits right now, he would not be able to become the boss of the server. Seems like Wu Chen was waiting for this exact moment as his plan succeeded. He tells that he has to go to work since his wife's company is in trouble as the product spokesperson they had agreed on had met with an accident. So, he has to help her find a new spokesperson. The person cheerfully tells Wu Chen that it's a very small task and he can get as many actresses as he wants since multiple actresses work under him. He tells that he is not bragging about it but, he can also call upon Tao Man Ying with just one phone call. Wu Chen tells the person that he has some work to do so let will take a leave as he has to go to East China for a company trip and so he cannot play at the moment. The person is surprised as Wu Chen is also from East China. But Wu Chen takes a leave even when the person tells him to wait for a second. As Wu Chen gets up to leave the gaming cafe, he gets a text from the same player on his phone stating that he got Wu Chen's number by bribing the owner of the private server. 
He asks Wu Chen to join him at play when he is finished with his business and asks Wu Chen that since they both are in East China, where do they meet? Question mark Wu Chen knew about that person and this is all he planned to lure that person for getting the actress to work for him. Wu Chen replies that the person can decide where to meet as he is in a hurry at the moment. Wu Chen praises the other gamers and relives them of their duties for the day as he receives that the person would be waiting for Wu Chen at the Qing Yuan building in the Zongcheng district. Sometime later, we see the Qing Yuan building where they both get introduced via their in-game name. The other player is the second son of the Lei family of the Hong Fa industry named Lei Cheng who is 42 years old. He introduces himself as Wu Chen to Lei Chang. Lei Chang asks him as to whether he knows anything about him and Wu Chen butters him well. Chang hooks onto the word reputation as Wu Chen mentioned it in his praises and demands Wu Chen to reveal his family name. Wu Chen tries to calm down the situation telling that Chang shouldn't be afraid as he is not there to harm him. The Hong Fa Lei family is a top 10 industrial company in the nation as their total assets exceed $60 billion. Lei Zhengui is the 70-year-old chairman in the semi-retired state and the main person in charge is Yu Lei Yu. Any major family that comes in contact with Lei Chang is considered a traitor to Lei Yu as Lei Yu has always wanted Chang's life to succeed. Chang is unmoved and demands Wu Chen reveal which family he is from. Wu Chen tells him to slow down as he is not from any family and it is just fate that he was able to meet him. Cheng thinks that he will have to slowly get Wu Chen to reveal his identity and whether he is sent by Lei Yu or not. But seems that he is too young for all this and maybe is a food delivery guy. Cheng wants to know about his wife's problem as Wu Chen has spent so much money on the game but still couldn't even get a spokesperson. Wu Chen tells Cheng not to tease him as he never thought that people would get his spokesperson into an accident. Cheng asks whether this is the reason why he blew so much money in a game to kill people and vent anger on them in the game. Cheng tells Wu Chen not to worry as he swears to help him find a spokesperson and asks about Wu Chen's wife's business. Wu Chen replies that they make cosmetics and it's called Symphony Fashion. Chen tells that so he is Li Ruobing's man and laughs out telling that he should have said about it if he was from the Li family and he thought that Wu Chen was from some other family since he was trying to hide it. Wu Chen clears it telling that he is not considered to be with the Li family as even Sheng would be knowing about Ruobing's relationship with her family. Wu Chen suddenly gets a call from Ruobing and when he answers his phone, Ruobing questions him whether he took $10 million to spend on games. Wu Chen tells her that he cannot explain it to her at the moment and tells her that they can increase the bet if she wants and that whoever loses will have to kneel and apologize to the winner. Ruobing tells him that he is just trying to delay the outcome of the bet. Cheng is surprised as to how Wu Chen is talking to Ruobing and asks about it as he is terrified at the outcome of the event of Li Ruobing kneeling to Wu Chen and wonders who Wu Chen is. Wu Chen tries to snug it off labeling it as couple things and Ruobing being a bit temperamental and they had a bet which has now gotten even bigger. Cheng understands the matter as he invites Wu Chen to drink some tea wanting to know about the bet if he doesn't mind telling. Wu Chen tells that someone is trying to mess with his wife's company and he wanted to help her but Ruobing denies it every time being protective of him from Ding Rulong. Chang understands that Ding Rulong got the spokesperson into an accident. Wu Chen adds that Ruobing is afraid that if Ding Rulong discovers about Wu Chen, he would come after Wu Chen and so she is concerned for his safety. Wu Chen tries to put up a good act by asking Cheng whether Wu Chen is a dignified man. Knowing that Ding Rulong is trying to get his wife from Wu Chen, should he act like a coward hiding somewhere? If he cannot even do something, would he even call himself a man? Cheng is taken by Wu Chen's words as he slams the table and agrees that Wu Chen is absolutely right and orders his men to replace the tea with some wine for the manly talk. He tells Wu Chen that Wu Chen is a man and he won't be a coward anymore and tells him to continue. Wu Chen had made a bet where Ruobing had given him full authority over the company's new product launch and if the press conference goes off without a hitch, then Wu Chen wins the bet else Ruobing will win the bet. He adds that if he loses the bet, he will have to listen to everything she says to him and will have to restrain himself and live like a small boy. After hearing everything, Chang gets excited and tells that he can easily help him in this case as it's just a spokesperson. 
He immediately calls someone and we see a girl's phone ringing. She picks up her phone and greets him as her father. We see Cheng talking to his daughter telling her to take a leave from her work and come back to East China as there is a very urgent work for her. He tells her that she has to do a cosmetic brand endorsement and not to be afraid of breaching any agreement as he will pay for all the contracts and wishes her good luck ending the call. He shows the phone screen with his daughter's contact information and Wu Chen gets shocked. Deep down in Wu Chen's mind, he knows that this was the result he had planned and it went on very smoothly, even though Tao Manying's contract would be a huge amount. He wanted to tell about Lei Yu's affairs as an exchange to Cheng but since he is a friend now who didn't even hesitate to offend Ding Rulong for standing with Wu Chen's side, he will treat him fairly. Cheng tells that they were destined to meet each other and he is just older by a few years so he can call him brother Sheng from now on. Wu Chen tells that it's alright and they truly were destined to meet each other. Sheng is taken aback as Wu Chen labels it as fate. Wu Chen shows his phone and asks Cheng to read the text message from the phone and we see Cheng's finger trembling after reading the message. Wu Chen tells him to find the owner of the number and get that person. That person will tell him about the truth of his accident which happened 10 years ago and has made Cheng go into a deep mode of shock and fear. Wu Chen tells Cheng to hurry up as if he is slow in catching up with the person. The person may flee overseas as the person is Xiang Shengjin. Cheng is in deep thought as he had already informed all his men but it seems that he has to hurry up to catch that person and let him slip away this time. We get to know that 10 years ago on the same night, a pre-planned truck crashed into Cheng's car at the junction of the road. Cheng tried to react quickly but was of no use as the car flew straight off into a valley and the car soon exploded into flames. Cheng was lucky and somehow survived the crash but his wife died right in front of him from the deadly car crash. Cheng was in the ICU for the next three months during which his agent brought him cues related to the car crash. The driver of the truck was Xiang Shengjin who is the deputy head of the security department of the Hongfa group and also worked for Lei Yu. But, after the accident, he disappeared, and Cheng lost direct evidence and could only accept their words. For the past 10 years, Cheng pretended to be a stupid cynical rich kid waiting for the day when he could find Xiang Shengjin and discover the truth regarding the incident. Cheng's subordinate informs him that the identity of the person has been confirmed and the address has been found out which makes Cheng very happy. Cheng takes a leave from Wu Chen and tells that he owes Wu Chen a favor for the information and if he needs any help, Wu Chen can count on him mentioning Wu Chen as his brother. It has been just two days in his new life and Wu Chen has two more brothers namely. Lu Ganian and Lei Chang. But, his work is done and he had to now go get his 20 million with a kneeling apology from Ruobing. He dials Ruobing's number in his phone but we see that Ruobing is hagging up his calls. She texts him saying that she is in a meeting. Wu Chen tells that wasn't a meeting in the morning and that maybe she is still mad at him for spending 20 million dollars to play a game. But he lets it all go and heads toward home. We see there is a traffic signal and the color is red indicating vehicles to halt. Multiple cars are at a halt waiting for the signal to turn green. Wu Chen notices a fleet of luxury cars and notices another woman. This woman is Su Ching Yang, the most beautiful girl in the East China Sea. She is one of the women who impressed Wu Chen the most in his previous reincarnation life as she is very different from the inside from her outer appearance. She is also very obedient and easy to control. Wu Chen thinks that since he has a chance to meet her by chance, he thinks to flirt a bit with her. He tries to wave his hand to her but she immediately closes her windows. This makes Wu Chen even more interested as Wu Chen texts her saying that when he saw her in person, she was way more beautiful than her appearance on the TV. He had saying when will there be a bright moon? This is a secret code which will make her surprised when she sees the text message as it contains her secret and she will definitely take the initiative to ask him out and negotiate. He gets a message thinking it's from her but he sees that it is from Li Ruotai as he requests Wu Chen to meet him for he has something to give to Wu Chen. Sometime later, we see Wu Chen and Ruotai standing in front of a lavish apartment. Ruotai tells that the house is 600 square feet with ground plus 3 floors and 1 underground floor along with a courtyard all for him.
Ruo Tai tells that Wu Chen helped him a lot yesterday and besides since his sister is pregnant, she cannot go to live with him in his old house so he gave him an early wedding present. He asks for his ID card so that he can get the papers done immediately. Wu Chen is a bit startled but doesn't speak anything. The next day morning, the 10th of July, we see a beautiful woman with a bodyguard asking about Miss Lee as she has an appointment with her at the reception. She is asked for her name by the receptionist and she answers it as Tao. The receptionist checks the records but is unable to find the appointment and thinks it is strange and asks her to wait for a moment as she checks about it. We see Ruobing yelling at her employees for not being able to find a spokesperson in the first meeting room. Just like any typical boss, she asks why are they getting paid so much if they cannot even do such a small task. She gets a call from the receptionist and upon getting to know it's Tao Man Ying, she tells the receptionist to bring the girl to her office. Ruobing is shocked as no one from the company invited her and whether Wu Chen invite her. Ruobing and Miss Tao meet and have a firm handshake as Ruobing apologizes for not being able to inform the receptionist about the meeting. Miss Tao is very chill as she praises her beauty and that she and Wu Chen are really a very good couple. Robing asks her to have a seat and asks how does she know and meet her husband? Miss Tao tells that they do not each other but her godfather, Lei Cheng, and Wu Chen are both brothers, and her godfather, Mr. Cheng had sent her there. Ruobing sweats getting to know about Wu Chen and Mr. Cheng being brothers. She is interrupted by Miss Tao to hurry up with the contract signing since she is in a hurry. Li Ruobing apologizes and orders her employee to quickly bring the contract for signing. They have a firm handshake exchanging greetings for starting off to work together on the project. We see Wu Chen in Ruobing's office telling her that since the contract has been signed, she should apologize to him as she has lost the bet. She asks Wu Chen about how he knew and met Lei Cheng. Wu Chen tells her that she is asking too many questions and a magician never reveals his tricks. He tells her not to change the subject of their conversation and to come and apologize to him. Ruobing takes off her jacket and then removes her brown heels. Tucking her hair back she says that she is Li Ruobing and gets down on her knees on the floor, she says that she apologizes. Wu Chen is impressed as Li Ruobing is really kneeling down to him to apologize and so he lends his hand accepting her apology and telling her to get up. She gets a call from Ruotai who tells her that someone is investigating her boyfriend Wu Chen as he just received the news. Li Ruobing asks about the investigators and Ruotai tells her that it is the Golden Service Group, the Su family. Ruobing asks Wu Chen about why is the Su family investigating him but Wu Chen tells her not to get involved in the matter as it's none of her business. Ruobing questions whether Wu Chen is trying to be mysterious again and whether he is acting like this because he wants her to pay more attention to him or is it that he has fallen in love with her. Wu Chen is provoked as he enters his Sigma mode telling her that she is neither the most beautiful woman nor the richest in the region and that she is always arrogant and unfriendly to strangers as if she looks down upon them. He asks her where she gets that level of confidence to think he would fall in love with her. Ruobing in despise tells him that it feels like he has a lot of women who are all very stunning and beautiful and can overthrow nations. He tells her that he used to have a lot of women before but not much anymore. He tells that it is hard to say if all of them were extremely stunning and beautiful but were definitely a lot of women who were more beautiful than her. Li Ruobing gets jealous asking about who that woman is as she is interested in knowing about it. Wu Chen tells her that he won't fall for her tricks of inquiring about his private affairs just for the sake of proving a point to her. She teases Wu Chen telling that since he cannot tell about that woman, she doesn't believe him but he doesn't need to be disappointed as it is not a big deal for her and he doesn't have to twist his tongue over it. Just then, Wu Chen gets a call from Su Ching Ying and Wu Chen tells that here it comes. He picks up the phone and Su Ching Ying asks whether she is speaking to Mr. Wu Chen and introduces herself. She asks him to meet her in person as it is very important and if they can make an appointment. Wu Chen showing off in front of Ruobing asks whether it is really necessary to meet in person. We see Su Qingying telling that it is really necessary and there are certain things that are better discussed in person and to meet her at the Tang Sha's private clubhouse the next morning at 9 o'clock and Wu Chen agrees to it.
Ruobing is completely jealous asking Wu Chen about Su Ching Ying and whether he is hinting that he was telling about Su Ching Ying being her woman. Wu Chen tells her that Su Ching Ying isn't his woman at the moment but who knows, maybe she will be in a few days. Although Ruobing doesn't know Su Ching Ying personally, she has heard a lot about her affairs as it is not a secret to the public. Her father focused on his business and got married late in life and so when Su Ching Ying was born, her father was already old. He raised her in a way that really cultivates nobility with strict family rules and discipline. Even when she goes abroad to study, she has bodyguards arranged for her 24 hours a day just to prevent her from falling in love early. But, later when her father became ill, her father got anxious for her to get married and the conditions for arranging a blind date became even more extreme as she cannot marry a man too old or young and the person's assets must not be less than a billion. The most important of which was that the person had to marry into the Su family. Ruobing knows that the Su family doesn't compromise on their conditions and since Su Kuangying is a well-behaved girl who listens to her family and Wu Chen is a person who would not accept that kind of marriage with such conditions, she tells him that it's impossible for him to catch up with Su Ching Ying. Wu Chen asks whether she still doesn't believe him and whether she wants to make another bet to which she agrees immediately. Wu Chen asks whether she really wants to make a bet with him and whether she isn't afraid of losing again to which Ruobing tells that she just wants to have the bet. Wu Chen asks for three days and he will make Su Ching Ying to be his woman who will be with him for the rest of her life. Ruobing tells him she will give him 30 days but Wu Chen is a firm on just three days making Ruobing tell that if he loses, she wants him to get on his knees to apologize to her. Wu Chen tells that it's okay for him but what if she loses that bet? Grabbing her by her waist, Ruobing asks what he wants and we see Ruobing accepting the terms if she loses making the terms of the bet settled. It's the 11th of July in the Tang Sha private club of the northern suburbs of Donghai City. The receptionist asks Wu Chen whether it's Wu Chen's first time there and would he want to familiarize himself with the environment first. Wu Chen replies telling he has an appointment with Miss Yu there. A person approaches asking if he is Mr. Wu to which he agrees and asks Wu Chen to accompany him as Miss Su has been waiting for him. We see Wu Chen getting off from a golf cart with the person accompanying him. As praises Su Ching for her golf shot which she had been practicing. She asks him about how did he know about the matter which he texted her. Wu Chen tells that it isn't important how he knows about it but Su Ching asks him to name a price to keep his mouth shut. Wu Chen asks whether she thinks he is blackmailing her as she is offering him money. She tells that not accepting the money will only make it hard for her to trust him. Wu Chen asks since she is so worried that why didn't she bring more bodyguards? She can arrest him and dig a hole to bury him to make him shut up forever. She tells that she is not like Li Ruobing, so she won't do such things and since he is Ruobing's boyfriend, no one will dare to do that to him. Wu Chen asks her whether she needs something to make her feel reassured which makes Su Ching clueless as he grabs her by her hands from behind squeezing her telling whether she needs evidence which makes her uncomfortable requesting Wu Chen to leave her. He tells that he is just teaching her how to play golf and not to think much about it as now she has the evidence that she can vouch for, hinting to her about him forcing her with playing golf and whether she is still unwilling. She thinks that Wu Chen is Li Ruobing's boyfriend and if Ruobing gets to know that Wu Chen was holding her like that and would never believe that he was just teaching her how to play golf and would definitely tear Wu Chen into pieces. But then she realizes that the one who should be scared is not her but Wu Chen and the less she struggles, the more she can grasp his handle to death. Su Qing's bodyguard seeing Wu Chen so close think about what is happening to her. Whether she is resisting or accepting Wu Chen's actions and seems to have no clue regarding the event. Su Qing asks Wu Chen whether he is not afraid of her calling Li Ruobing and telling him about his actions. Wu Chen tells that he is actually scared but even she must be scared of getting her secrets exposed so they are even. She asks whether he is deliberately giving her a point to blackmail him back. He tells her not to think around while spanking her and tells her to continue playing golf. He advises her not to turn her hips outwards but to keep them inwards questioning her about how her coach taught her to play golf. Su Ching is shocked and blushes at what Wu Chen did. 
Even the guards are shocked as they hurriedly call to notify her mother about her and Wu Chen's action on the golf ground. Wu Chen is seen teaching her golf telling her, he will teach her for one more time. All she has to do is to draw her legs back and then straighten her arms. He spanks her butt yet again making her moan telling her that her pelvis is tilted forward and she should take it a little bit more to do well. Su Chen goes for the shot asking about whether her shot was correct or not. Wu Chen praises her and tells her that he won't be able to teach her other techniques for the time being as it is estimated that her mother has already brought someone to arrest him. We get to know that her bodyguards informed her mom that Wu Chen suddenly hugged her daughter and was also seen chatting and laughing with him. They inform her that Wu Chen also spanked her butt as if he was teaching her how to play golf but didn't look like that. They tell that he looks young and that Miss Su came today to meet him. Her mother is shocked and furious at the same time ordering her men to keep a watch on them and not let them escape as she is coming over right away. The bodyguards say that they would do as she asks. Su Ching asks Wu Chen that if her mother is coming there then what should they do? Wu Chen tells that they will talk later and will have to escape from there first. He asks whether she wants to escape with him. This makes her question herself about it. He asks her whether she wants to live like this forever which makes her nervous. He grabs her hand and tells her not to think much about it and just run. The guards try to catch them from fleeing from the golf court but they both manage to escape in a red car. The guards inform their boss that Su Ching has escaped with that boy which makes her mother shocked. Wu Chen asks her whether she is afraid which she denies. She gets a call from her mother on her phone. Wu Chen advises her to consider being herself for a day hinting to live a carefree life for a day. Su Ching is sweating heavily as she has to answer her mom's phone. She gathers the courage and answers the phone and tries to tell that she is with a friend. This makes her mother rage as she tells how come she is with a friend and when did she get to meet a friend. She asks whether she knows about herself and whether that man is good enough for her that she ran away with a man. Her mother tells her that she really let her down today and to return to her home at that very moment. Su Ching, thanks Wu Chen in her heart to make her feel herself as she yells at her mother over the phone that she is a human being who can breathe and not her puppet. This makes her mother shocked as she cannot believe what Su Ching said to her. Wu Chen tells Su Ching that her mother will try to mobilize all the power of the Su family to find them and she tells that her mother is afraid of losing her reputation and so she won't make a big deal out of it. Isn't she afraid that he can really abduct her and sell her somewhere and whether she still wants to go around with him? She asks whether it even matters as no one ever dared to approach her in her life and she always lived under a false light. When she was a kid, people always praised her as the kid who always got first place in her exams and told her that she was different from everyone else around. When she started her own business, she was complimented by people who were in her wealth and not who she was. Her mother always made her live the way she wanted to, making her better day after day. She would never let her eat a second bowl of rice so that she doesn't get fat and say the most beautiful in the whole of East China and she is all tired of this. Su Ching tells that maybe running out with him may be the only chance she has as he really makes her feel comfortable as a person. Wu Chen believes that she made the right choice and that it's better to change sooner than to be sick beyond cure. She asks whether he is Li Ruobing's boyfriend and whether he is afraid that Ruobing will find out about it as she unbuckles her seatbelt. The next second we see her grabbing Wu Chen by his face and having a French kiss, all lip locked. Must be tasty indeed. Wu Chen in a bossy manner asks her what is she doing as he is driving and whether she wants both of them to die and also why is she kissing and biting him at the same time. Su Ching tries to speak something but Wu Chen orders her to sit still at her place. She submissively follows what Wu Chen says and sits still. Su Ching's hidden attribute is being submissive which makes her really interesting. Wu Chen remembers the day when in one of his reincarnations on the same day of the millennium, he had got hold of her, the first beautiful girl of the East Sea without any flaws. To satisfy his curiosity about how she became a high-quality human template, she opened her laptop and logged into a form in front of him where he saw multiple comments under her posts with all sorts of creepy comments as he read it throughout the night. Looking at those posts, 
He realized that the perfect shiny image that has been maintained over the years was actually a lock on her body that weighed her down. That post not only showed the chain and mask on her body but also the textual evidence of her hidden attributes of a jitterbug. Wu Chen never thought that there would be a day when he would need to use this attribute of hers but he tells her to fasten her seatbelts and sit tight. She asks him where he wants to go and upon Wu Chen's green signal, she tells him to go to his house. Wu Chen agrees and we see our scene of a view of a tall beautiful building four hours later. Something very important has happened and we see Wu Chen and Su Ching sleeping comfortably sleeping over each other. Wu Chen gets a call and upon picking up Ruotai's call he asks whether the Su family came to his place. Ruotai informs that he received a call and it was from Mrs. So who asked him about the person driving the car and he couldn't do anything but answer it. He asks what's going on but Wu Chen shrugs it off saying that it is nothing but a small problem and he will handle with himself and hangs up the call. Wu Chen immediately gets a call from Li Ruobing. When he picks up the call, she asks whether he offend anyone from the Su family as she was contacted by them. Wu Chen asks if she wants to know about the matter to which she agrees. Wu Chen tells her to wait a minute and asks Su Qing to say something. Su Qing asks him what he wants her to say and Wu Chen tells her to say whatever she wants to say and not worry about Ruobing knowing why she is. Ruobing asks over the phone saying honey who are you talking to and whether everything is alright. Wu Chen tells Ruobing to ask about it herself to the girl. Su Qing asks who the person on the other end of the call is, and Li Ruobing tells her it is her. Su tries to show that she recognizes her. Ruobing asks as to who is she speaking to and she reveals that she is Su Qing Ying. Li Ruobing seems furious as she questions her about why is she with Wu Chen and what is her relationship with him. Su Qing tells that they are just friends discussing work. Ruobing knows that she was clearly shouting at him and now she is saying that they are friends and that something is wrong. So, she apologizes to interrupt their work and asks her to return the phone to Wu Chen to talk to him. She asks Wu Chen about his whereabouts and gets to know that he is in the old house in the villa Ruotai gave him. She tells Wu Chen to wait for her there and not to leave the house. Wu Chen thinks it will be very interesting when Li Ruobing will arrive. Su Qing asks him why is he not afraid that Ruobing will get to know about their relationship to which Wu Chen replies that he and Ruobing are not in a relationship and it is a secret. She tells that so he is also a fake just like the other three she had. Wu Chen instructs her to keep it secret since even her younger brother doesn't know about it to which she agrees as she doesn't want to cause trouble for herself. She tells so the reason Wu Chen lied to her and sent her a fake handle was that he wasn't afraid of Li Ruobing. Wu Chen grabs her by the waist asking if she regrets what Wu Chen did. She denies it saying she doesn't regret it at all. At the same time on the other side, we see Li Ruobing rushing to Wu Chen's house in a white car thinking that it doesn't make sense and she cannot find any reasonable explanation as to why they are together as Su Qing is not such a woman. Just like Tao Yao Ying signing a contract last time, the core of the issue is Wu Chen and that Wu Chen is really like a god, unfathomable and mysterious. She arrives at his house 40 minutes later and Wu Chen greets her asking her to come inside but Ruobing goes inside in search of something and we get to know that she is searching for Su Qing asking about where she is. Wu Chen points out where Su Qing is and we get to see Su Qing in an apron calling Wu Chen as honey and asking if Miss Li has arrived. She greets Li Ruobing telling her it's been a long time since meeting her. Ruobing exchanges the greeting thinking about whether she is Su Qing and whether she is cooking food for Wu Chen. Su Qing calls Wu Chen as honey telling him that the soup is almost ready and she will scramble another egg and will be able to eat together in a moment. Li Ruobing is getting jealous as she asks Wu Chen about what's happening and Wu Chen tells her that nothing is happening as Su Qing is his woman. Ruobing is shocked as she questions him about how did she become his woman and when did it happen and Wu Chen tells her that it happened the same day. She is startled as they became a couple today and asked whether they knew each other before getting no for an answer. She was going to question more to Wu Chen but Su Qing calls out to Wu Chen telling him that the meal will soon be ready and to watch the pot as she is going to the bathroom. Su Qing tells Miss Li not just stand there and have a seat because the meal will get ready very soon. 
She shuts the bathroom door and Ruobing doesn't understand a thing as she grabs Wu Chen's hand telling him to come with her. But just then, Su Ching comes out and informs Wu Chen that the laundry is done and that if they don't hang it on the balcony, the bedsheets won't dry. Ruobing gets very jealous and sad seeing a perfect Su Ching become Wu Chen's woman as she seems just perfect doing all the chores whether it's the clothes, the food, or helping each other out in other tasks. She feels very sad for herself as she isn't the same as Su Ching and we can never get to know what's on a woman's mind tbh. They are all sitting at a table and Su Ching asks Miss Li and Wu Chen to start eating. She picks up a piece of steak and gives it to Wu Chen telling him to try it. This makes Ruobing jealous as judging by Su Ching's posture, she is going to feed Wu Chen which she feels is an outrageous level of intimacy. Wu Chen praises her telling the food is delicious and she asks Ruobing to also eat the food. Ruobing thinks that Su Ching forced herself to lead Wu Chen to eat and she cannot deviate from the correct path and has to take the initiative to attack so she questions Miss Su as to how long has she been with Wu Chen. She tells Ruobing that it wasn't long before she fell in love at first sight with Wu Chen and from then on she knew that Wu Chen was her destiny. Ruobing thinks that it is not at all surprising that Su Ching fell in love with a man but it is absolutely impossible to fall in love at first sign, especially with such a unique family background and sense something fishy. Su Ching asks her that Wu Chen told her that she and Wu Chen are not a real couple which stuns Li Ruobing. Su Ching tells her not to worry as she won't say about it and also to keep her secret since her love cannot be known by the outside world yet and that Miss Li can keep acting and she wouldn't mind even if they have some intimacy in public. Wu Chen asks Ruobing why is she looking at him and they should eat. Su Ching plays around leaning on Wu Chen's shoulder indirectly showing Ruobing that Wu Chen is her man. Li Ruobing gets agitated as she sees Su Ching indirectly provoking her. So, she picks up a prawn from the table and tears it into two halves, and gives it to Wu Chen telling him to have this prawn. Both, Wu Chen and Su Ching are stunned by her move and Wu Chen quietly eats the prawn. Wu Chen finishes the food telling it's delicious and that he is full since he ate very fast. Su Ching says that she is very happy and tells him to take a rest as she cleans up everything and also to accompany Miss Li and not to neglect their guests. Su Ching then takes all the utensils from the table to the kitchen to clean up and we see the furious side of Li Ruobing coming out demanding Wu Chen explain what is he doing. She is in a rage as she grabs his hands and drags him to another room with her. Wu Chen pulls her hand moving forward and we see Li Ruobing on top of Wu Chen. She tells Wu Chen to take it easy but Wu Chen tells her that she lost the bet and why is she asking so many questions. He tells her that he should now think about the reward for the bet which makes her angry as well as blush at the same time. Wu Chen tells Ruobing that he is very tired as he has been busy for most of the day and his body is aching and can she give him a massage? She asks him if she has to give him a massage then or in his bedroom to which Wu Chen tells her that it isn't comfortable here and they should go to the bedroom. Ten minutes have passed and seeing no one around, Su Ching calls out for them and looks around for them. She hears a sound when she is searching for them. She sees it coming from a room with a narrow door opening. As she peeks inside, she sees Li Ruobing giving a massage to Wu Chen with Wu Chen being half naked. She is completely shocked seeing Li Ruobing giving a massage to Wu Chen as according to her, how can a woman like Ruobing serve a man this way? Wu Chen notices Su Ching and asks her whether she is finished with the chores and tells her to take a rest as she must be tired as they will be done in a bit. She notices Ruobing didn't care about her noticing them in such a way and thinks whether Ruobing is also like her and in that case, since both of them are of the same kind, they are allies then. She thinks that Wu Chen is more powerful than she imagined as he even managed to conquer Li Ruobing. We see Su Ching hurriedly opening her slippers rushing towards their bed and sitting on the bed refers Ruobing as her elder sister asking to massage Wu Chen together. We see both of them massaging Wu Chen and Ruobing thinks that it is impossible since when Su Ching saw Wu Chen being massaged by her, not only she was calm but even joined in and massaged Wu Chen with her and called her a sister. She quizzes herself as to what's the matter with Su Ching or if is she crazy. 
But it would be impossible as if she had a problem she wouldn't be so perfect like the rumors say because only someone with enough self-control can show their best performance. And thinks as to when did Wu Chen make Su Qing love him to such an extent. Su Qing asks Ruobing as to what is she thinking and tells her to keep massaging. Wu Chen tells Su Qing to stop massaging him and not to forget to take her medicine. She tells him that she will go downstairs to get the medicine. As she leaves the room, Ruobing thinks Su Qing is sick in the head. With everything going out in her head, she asks whether Wu Chen plans to explain everything or not. Wu Chen tells her to give him a billion to know the truth. Ruobing tells him not to be so sarcastic as she is too lazy to even ask how they fell in love and whether the Su family is investigating him because of his relationship with Su Qing. Wu Chen tells her that they weren't investigating him but the problem is that Su Qing ran away from the home with him. Ruobing asks about what is he going to do and whether he is going to marry into the Su family to which Wu Chen asks whether she thinks he is the kind of man who would marry into a family. Ruobing asks whether he would break up and even if he does the Su family won't let him off easily. Wu Chen tells her why to break up when they can handle the Su family which makes Ruobing very curious and she tells him not to forget that he is currently her boyfriend. Wu Chen tells her that's exactly why he said they can deal with the current situation and she asks whether he means that the Su family doesn't know about his relationship with Li Ruobing and she can only choose to help him out. Wu Chen praises her telling her she is really smart and she asks that since everyone is on the same boat, why did she run away? Wu Chen tells that she had been living like a puppet for over 20 years and she wants to live her own life now and whether it is too much for him to help Su Qing. He gets a call from Su Qing telling him that she saw her family near his house and what should they do. Wu Chen tells her that it's no problem and they will come downstairs right away and not to worry as they will handle it easily. Wu Chen tells Ruobing that the Su family has come looking for them and they must go downstairs. Ruobing asks whether he called her to his house because he knew the Su family would be coming by that time. Wu Chen indirectly agrees to it making Li Ruobing uncomfortable with the situation. Wu Chen asks her about it and she tells him that she understands what he is saying but she feels that he is manipulating and disregarding other people's feelings in this manner. Wu Chen clarifies it by telling her not to be so harsh on words with him and that it was just a coincidence that both the Su family and she were there at the same time and it's nothing related to him manipulating things. Ruobing tells that she doesn't blame him and it is just that she doesn't like this kind of feeling. He tells that her words sound as if she is acting like a spoiled child and grabs her hand telling her that they have to present themselves as a united in front of them first and they should go. Wu Chen and Li Ruobing are downstairs and the bodyguards tell her that Wu Chen is the one they are looking for and then ask him about the whereabouts of Su Qing telling him to hand over her to them. Li Ruobing acts furious at them asking whether they are from the Su family and asks whether they are there to find and cause trouble for her. The bodyguards try to explain that she misunderstood them and they are not there to find her but they are looking for Wu Chen who has kidnapped their young lady. Ruobing defends Wu Chen stating why would her man dare to kidnap any other women which makes the other guard nervous to answer and we see Su Qing yelling at the guards as to who said that she was kidnapped. The bodyguards try to tell her that it was not them but her mom but she tells them to stop using her mother's name to cause trouble and it is not their business regarding the problem between her and her mother. Su Qing's mother comes out of the car telling her not to be so ridiculous. Li Ruobing greets her and that she is still so radiant and beautiful and Madame Su also greets Li Ruobing. We see Madame Su shaking hands with Wu Chen and praises him saying, Wu Chen is indeed talented and impressive as rumored and Miss Li has really good taste. Ruobing tells that Madame Su is too kind for the compliments. Madame Su tells them that it is not the right place to talk and they should move to a different place to have a proper conversation. Ruobing approves of the idea and tells Madame Su that even she has things to discuss with her. Madame Su gives a stern eye glare to Su Qing making her scared as she hides behind Wu Chen to avoid eye contact with her mother. Everyone is in the Su family industry's Jin Fu tea house. Madame Su asks Ruobing about her presence with her daughter. She tells that it is very impolite of her to take away her daughter from her without any notice even if it was her boyfriend who did it. She threatens that Wu Chen's behavior violates the law and that perhaps she should consult her lawyer in that case. 
Ruobing tells that originally it was she who would meet with her daughter Su Ching but due to some unforeseen circumstances, she had to ask her boyfriend to meet her instead. Madam Su questions why did Wu Chen forcibly take her daughter away. Ruobing calmly tells her that her daughter is already 27 years old and she cannot be forced to go with Wu Chen without being able to reject the offer. She questions whether Madam Su does and isn't curious about the reason for their meeting. Madam Su asks for an explanation and we see Li Ruobing getting up from her seat confronting Madam Su that Kuang Ying is not like a living person anymore and is just like a carefully crafted puppet who cannot even decide on how many bowls of rice to eat. She tells that this is the reason why Su Kuang Ying envied as well as desired to become a woman like her. Madam Su is very shocked at what Li Ruobing told her about just now. Ruobing continues telling that Su Ching always wanted to meet her to get some help but she couldn't help her. She grabs a packet with something inside asking Madam Su whether she knows about it. She informs that she had been taking this medicine and her daughter had brought it for her. Madam Su is startled confirming it and telling that it is no big deal. Ruobing on the other hand explains that the point is not about the medicine but that the simple act of buying a medicine would bring happiness to her daughter. She tells that Su Ching has never bought medicine by herself before and that for her to go out alone and buy medicine is something novel and exciting at the same time even at the age of 27. She seeks Madam Su's attention to see whether something is wrong with her daughter or not. Su Kuang Ying with sweat rolling down her face lowers her head accepting the situation. Wu Chen is proud of Ru Obing for her splendid performance as well as her logical ability. She asks whether Madame Su doesn't understand the situation as her daughter is extremely upset. As for today, she and Wu Chen were present when she wanted to go and buy medicine. But, what about the next time when there will be no one around her and whether she is not concerned about her daughter? The whole room fell into silence for three minutes. Madame Su asks whether Miss Li is seeking appreciation to which Ru Obing denies telling that Su Ching is her friend. Wu Chen yet again praising Ruobing thinks to wrap up the situation and so starts to add fuel to the fire. He calls out Madame Su telling that he and Ruobing had been working hard for the entire day just like that and even they are tired of it. This makes Ruobing question herself as to why is Wu Chen getting so angry and draws to the conclusion that Wu Chen wants to speed up things so she tries to play along putting up a show together telling Wu Chen what is he doing and he doesn't have to say that since Su Kuang Ying is her friend. Wu Chen raises his voice asking whether she hasn't had enough yet that even after helping Miss Su out of concern that Miss Su might do something reckless and worrying that Miss Su might get in trouble, and what is she getting in return? They are blaming her instead of appreciating her and he feels very sad for her. Ruobing tries to calm down Wu Chen by patting him gently on his chest. She murmurs not to argue since Su Ching is her friend and not to get upset like a lovey-dovey couple. Su Ching on the other hand is terrified with their acting skills thinking that even she would have fallen for it if she wasn't aware of it. This also makes Madame Su question whether she should really thank her or not and then tells her that she understands her good intentions. She also tells her daughter that as a mother she didn't mean any harm to her and from now on, she will consider allowing her to do something on her own. She also tells that she is fortunate that she was able to make friends like Miss Lee. Even Ruobing praises Kuang Ying for comforting Madame Su and tells them that she is getting late and won't disturb them anymore. In a gentle tone, she comforts her daughter advising her to not work up too much with the pressure put on by her. She tells Su Ching that she can stay and enjoy her day and can come back to the company's meeting the next day and she will head back first. Everyone takes a sigh of relief as Madame Su takes a leave and the main door is closed. Wu Chen labels it as a mission accomplished as the first stage of their plan ends there. Ruobing looks at Madame Su leaving telling Su Ching that her mother didn't leave any bodyguards or insiders behind to monitor them. Su Ching instantly grabs Wu Chen out of joy asking whether he was really angry as he looked very fierce to which Wu Chen denies telling her that he was just acting. Ruobing is jealous and requests them to stop it for the time being. Wu Chen tells them that it was time for business and whom should he call first. Ruobing is all worried as she brawls over Wu Chen grabbing his hand and telling him not to mess around. Wu Chen asks her whether he said that he was going to cause trouble. 
Ruobing tells him to stop playing around and since everything is fine now, Madam Su is unlikely to pursue anything against them anymore as he can continue meeting Su Ching in the future and asks what more does he wish? Wu Chen asks Su Kuang Ying whether she wants to continue meeting each other secretly like a love affair or not since he doesn't like it that way. He tells that if she follows him, then he has the obligations and means to relieve her of her difficult situation and not let her be forced to choose between love and family making her blush. He puts his hand around her telling her to come and listen to him as he has to make a few calls. He tells her that he will contact other people and that he wants her to take over the power of the Su family and become the CEO of the Jin Fu Club in the shortest time possible. After this, she will have the final say not only in the company but also at home which will prevent her mother from controlling her in the future as her mother will understand that she cannot control a powerful person like her. And her father will be even more proud and pleased with her. He asks her if she is willing to do the same to which she agrees after some thought. He appreciates her willingness and searches for a contact and then starts the plan by calling the contact on his phone. Wu Chen is sitting on a sofa dialing a number with Ruobing and Su Qing standing beside him. Ruobing sits down close to Wu Chen which makes Su Qing jealous seeing them so close to each other. She also wants to be close to Wu Chen so she goes and grabs his arm with her arm like a cute couple. Wu Chen asks Su Qing as to whether she is tired and if she wants to listen to the call, he can put it on the speaker. The call is connected and the person asks about who called him. Wu Chen asks whether he had any nightmares recently and did he dreamt about the Nan He warehouse and that Bei Keifeng had requested to ask about it. He questions whether it is true that he has made quite a bit of money in recent years which makes the person yell at him asking who the is he. Wu Chen tells to meet him one hour later at the Qing Yuan Tea House's private room. Ruobing questions Wu Chen if he can really take over the Su family with just those two sentences he spoke earlier. Wu Chen asks whether she didn't get it and gives her a hint that it's internal disintegration meaning breaking down from within. Ruobing tells him to reconsider it a little more. Wu Chen sarcastically replies her whether she wants to make a bet again to which she declines and tells them to depart. One hour later we see them arriving at the place and Wu Chen instructs them to stay there and have tea as he will go to the room first. Wu Chen enters the room and seeing the person already arrived compliments him on being very punctual. The old man gets up and shuts the door and asks him whether it was he who spoke to him earlier over the phone. This person is Yao Hong Lin, the director and shareholder of the Jin Fu Group, and holds 3.8% of the shares. Wu Chen agrees that it was he who spoke over the phone which makes Yao Hong Lin is furious as he demands to know where Bei Keifeng is and questions him about how much Bei Keifeng paid him as a bribe and what he wants. He yells at Wu Chen telling that he cannot threaten him just because he knows a little bit about his affairs. He adds that if Wu Chen is so smart then he should reveal Bei Keifeng's whereabouts and he will give him a huge sum of money that Wu Chen would never be able to spend in his entire life. Wu Chen sipping tea from the cup tells that they can talk about the money later and that he is truly someone who kills and sets fire. He admits that Mr. Yao is really bold and daring. Mr. Yao tells Wu Chen to do whatever he wants but not to make unfounded accusations about him. Wu Chen with a smirk inquires about the money buried in the barren hill and tells that with the advancement in technology, the unsolvable cases previously can be easily solved now and what does he think about it? Wu Chen has clearly hit the pain point of Mr. Yao making him anxious and asking if he is there to extort money from him. And if this is the case, he will give him 150 million and tries to shut up Wu Chen's mouth by bribing him. Wu Chen advises Mr. Yao not to be impatient and tells him that he has heard that the boss's business has been bad recently and he had to rely on falsifying accounts to cover the losses. He asks about the name of his little mistress who helped him with it. Mr. Yao is completely terrified and tells him to stop and tells him that he will pay him 2 billion. He changes it to 3 billion and will split it in installments and tells that Wu Chen won't get anything more. Just then, we see Su Qing barge into the room as she calls out to Mr. Yao making him completely stunned for a moment. He tries to calm down Su Qing but couldn't utter a single word. Wu Chen places his hand over Mr. Yao's shoulder and asks him why did he come over to the room so quickly and Mr. Yao asks if they heard everything. 
Su Ching questions Mr. Yao about whether he really killed people and set fire to them. This makes Mr. Yao startled and we can see him sweating from fear and stammering and speaking a few words. Wu Chen calms down the situation by pouring tea into the cup telling her not to talk about the past for the time being. He tells Mr. Yao that he will be straightforward and doesn't need his money which makes Mr. Yao even more frightened thinking about whether he wants to take his life, if not his money. Wu Chen tells him that from now, all he has to do is to support whatever Su Qing says in the board meetings. Mr. Yao asks whether it is that simple of a deal to which Wu Chen affirms. Mr. Yao gets relieved and jokingly tells Su Qing that he thought that someone was going to kill him and it scared him a bit. He said that she can directly tell him if there is a small matter like this and how could he not comply with her word since it is not necessary to trouble her and Wu Chen. He breathes a sigh of relief since he knows that Su Qing is the only successor of the family and no matter what happens to the Su family, she will eventually become the chairman of the group. So if they want to use him for their benefit, they won't sell him out which will not only resolve the crisis but will also make him huge profits and thank them assuring them that from now on he is with them in all their decisions and would always look up to her as his leader. Wu Chen tells that a gentleman's word is good as his bond so Mr. Yao can leave making Mr. Yao happily leave. Ruobing is unsatisfied questioning Wu Chen if this is all he got since even if Mr. Yao supports her, there will be no use in getting one vote from a single director as there are more than a dozen of directors on the Jin Fu board and not everyone will fall for his threats. Wu Chen asks her if she is trying to get him to say something. Ruobing in a serious mode tells him that she isn't joking with him and what he did was blackmailing and it can be very serious if things go wrong. And there are over 10 directors on the board so how can he solely rely to deal with them by blackmailing them? Wu Chen tells her that he doesn't need to deal with all of them since some of them will be enough. Su Qing is all excited asking him about how many people they have to threaten and he tells them that there are 5 more left and she can continue drinking her tea while she waits for him. Su Qing gets concerned telling him not to work too much and tire himself. Next, we see if a horde of board members, the chief managing officer, the chief financial officer, the legal supervisor, the institutional shareholder, and the independent director all blackmailed to vouch for Su Qing from then on. After all this is finished, we see Wu Chen taking a leave telling them to take care. Ruobing yet again questions Wu Chen that he hasn't reached two-thirds of the seats on the board and not even half of the board with six directors. So, how would he control the whole board? Wu Chen says that some things are complicated to explain and she should wait for the results the next day. Su Qing grabs him telling whatever her husband said is correct and that she will listen to him. Wu Chen tells that there are still some things that need to be explained to Su Qing. So, he asks Ruobing whether it is okay for them to stay at her place for the night. Ruobing having no choice agrees to his stay and we see them all walking by towards the house. We see Ruobing telling Su Qing to go and take a shower first as she grabs Wu Chen to the balcony telling him to stop talking. Grabbing him by both her hands over his shoulder she demands him for a KIS. Wu Chen and Li Ruobing are having an intimate moment in some weird position. Wu Chen thinks that this cannot be true since Su Qing has gone to take a shower and will come out soon. So no matter what, Ruobing will never pick this moment and thinks that if this is the case, then Ruobing is just acting. He soon realizes that Ruobing is looking for a paparazzi and so makes her all worked up for it as we see Ruobing in a high thirst for something special. We see a paparazzi filming them with a camera in his hand so... Wu Chen decides to play along making sure that Ding Rulong gets even more offended. A couple of minutes later Wu Chen tells her that the paparazzi should have gone by now making her realize why he was so relaxed and since it's getting late, she tells him to rest easy. Meanwhile, we are shown the scene of South Guang City in the Rui Long Company's head office. Where Ding Rulong is really agitated by Li Ruobing's recent scene on the balcony as he watches all the videos the paparazzi has taken. He is fuming in rage to take revenge against Wu Chen as he swears to kill Wu Chen. Ding Rulong calls his subordinate Jiang Chuan who is one of Ding Rulong's most trusted subordinates and an ex-special force. 
He orders Jiang Chuan to go to East China and find this guy named Wu Chen showing a photo in his hand and orders him to will Wu Chen with as worse as he can do it. We see it's actually the complete information of Wu Chen. Seeing that the East China Sea is Li Tai Ruo's territory and requested five days to finish the work. Ru Long is already frustrated and says that he cannot wait for that long and gives him three days to listen to the news of Wu Chen's death. Jiang Chuan is in stress over it obeying Ding Rulong's order. The next day we see Wu Chen and Su Qing sleeping together and Wu Chen tells Su Qing to wake up. She tells that she hasn't had enough sleep but Wu Chen tells her to get more sleep after she finishes her work for the day. He also asks her whether she remembers the things he taught her the day before and she agrees nodding her head as the current day's success or failure will decide her life's fate. We see Ruobing in a stunning maroon dress entering their room telling Su Qing to get up and she will give her ride to the company. Su Qing gets all ready and we see the employees informing her about the paperwork and other work they carried out. She tells them that she will discuss everything after the meeting and that she has to go to the conference room for the meeting as she bids farewell to Ruobing. She then proceeds towards the office building ordering the subordinates to come in with her. It's 10 a.m. in the Jin Fu company and we see an executive meeting taking place. Madam Su is very furious with Su Qing as we see there is some disagreement between them regarding the decision of firing two employees namely, Zhou De and Yang Kuo. Su Qing also tells her that if they disagree then she will call the board of directors which makes Madam Su even more enraged. Su Qing tells her mother that she is the executive vice president of the company and is a member of the board of directors. She has all the rights to call for a board meeting. Acting all up, Su Qing tells that in fact she is the executive vice president and so she doesn't require any resolution from the board to lay off an employee from the security department and the deputy director. She tells her assistant to notify the human resources department about it once the meeting is over. Madam Su slams her hand on the table asking what wrong did those two employees do that she is firing them for no reason at all and that it's the company's fault that the incident caused labor issues and if the news spreads, it will have a huge impact on the reputation of the company and they cannot afford these consequences. We get a flashback of the previous day when Wu Chen gave a pen drive with proof regarding the two employees she wants to fire as those employees have done something very serious. Su Qing steps up with confidence as she tells Madam Su that she has a reason to fire them from their job. She explains that five years ago in the morning, there was a major robbery at the company's store in East China's Commercial Street. It was the largest store of the company in the country with the best decoration and surveillance systems as well as the highest level of security. Switching on the projector with the remote, she shows the chart of the company's share price telling that since such a store was robbed, the outside world started questioning their security capabilities along with the decision-making board which caused the stock price to drop for many years and so the company's value fell to 40 billion. So, it's common sense that Joe De who is the director of the security department needs to take responsibility for it. But for her, it doesn't matter whether Joe takes responsibility for the incident or not as they must let the outside world know that the company is determined to reform on security-related issues. She tells the board that only by firing the director of the security department, Mr. Joe De can the company pull back the stock prices making everyone think that she has changed a lot from before. Madam Su allows her to fire the security department chief but questions Yang Kuo and whether she will also going to shift the blame to his head. Su Qing tells her that she shouldn't blame Yang Kuo who doesn't even work for the company anymore. This makes Madame Su confused making Su Qing inform her that Yang Kuo was only working for the company in name as he was just her personal bodyguard. This makes Madame Su realize that it doesn't matter who is controlling whom and that it is not the main topic but that Su Qing is trying to rebel against her. So she tells to call the board of directors meeting and immediately notify the company's board for a meeting being held at 3 o'clock in the afternoon the same day. On the other side in the symphony fashion, Ruobing is questioning Wu Chen as to why did he visit the company and since the Su family is going to be turned upside down, isn't he going to do anything? Wu Chen reminds her that he has done everything and they have to just wait for how Su Ching performs and he just wants to draw for the time being. Ruobing is looking gorgeous making her curious asking about what is he drawing. 
Wu Chen with his damn wrist says that he is drawing her. Wu Chen thinks that the photos Ding Rulong's men took the previous day would be done with their investigation and since they would be preparing to make a move, it's time for him to do something. We see Ruobing questioning him again about the same thing and he tells it is nothing but just a sketch for her that he wants to draw. Ruobing tells him that she cannot be a model for him as she is busy with her work and doesn't have time for it. Wu Chen tells her to carry on with her work and he will do his work and she can pretend that he is not there. He scrolls through a WhatsApp group chat which mainly focuses on sketches and there is a person in the group who needs to draw in order to complete their tasks. There is also a person in the group who has a close relationship with Ding Rulong. As she completes the outline of the sketch, he texts that that teacher Zing Chen is very strict making others question his legitimacy and sketching skills. So, he clicks the sketch of Li Ruobing which he completed a few moments ago, and posted it in the group mentioning he was casually drawing it. 40 minutes later, Everyone is shocked and in awe of his sketching skills as they praise him for his work trying to contact him in the group chat and we see multiple private messages from them for Wu Chen. Wu Chen is still waiting for the person to message him about the trap he had set up. He soon gets a private message from a woman that she has a daughter in junior high school and her daughter has been studying art for three years now and requested whether he can give her some guidance making Wu Chen excited as he catches the fish he set the trap for. We get to know that she is Ding Rulong's senior high school sister who holds the most special position among all of Ding Rulong's women. The reason why her position is so special is because Sing Rulong had an illegitimate daughter together with her who is now 14 years old. Wu Chen replies by telling her that she is being too modest and whether he can evaluate her daughter's artwork first. He praises her daughter's artwork skills telling that her daughter draws well and is much better than the children in the group who just joined and she is really a talent. She says that getting affirmation from a top expert indeed gives her confidence that her child truly has the talent. Replying to Wu Chen she tells that it's great to hear coming from him and asks him what he does for a living and whether he is in Shanghai. It's even easier than Wu Chen had thought. He questions her about why she asks about it. She explains that he is more skilled than the teachers she had met before and would like to invite him to be his daughter's tutor. Accommodation won't be a problem for him and she will also pay him 2,000 yuan for each tutoring session. He tells her that she is being too polite and indeed her child has great talent but as for her proposal and then leaves midway. She asks him whether he has any concerns and everything is easy to discuss and to refuse her offer. Wu Chen cunningly tells her that since they have had this fortunate encounter, they can discuss the details in a while. She tells him to feel free to contact her whenever he has time and that she will be waiting for his message over the next 24 hours. Wu Chen's plan is going on smoothing and it's time for him to make that woman all his so that she will come to Donghai and be completely under his control as she is an important key to the black material that could incriminate Ding Rulong. He gets up from his seat requesting Ruobing to continue with her work and he needs to leave as he also has something to do. The women and her daughter are just a part of Wu Chen's plan and there is a lot more to come. Wu Chen dials someone who asks him about Wu Chen's identity. Wu Chen replies that obviously, he is looking for him who is a double agent and what does he think about death when Ding Rulong finds out about his mission. The person on the call denies it saying that Wu Chen is speaking nonsense and asks who he is telling that he has no idea about who he is talking about. Wu Chen asks since he is not admitting then Wu Chen should go and find Li Ruotai about it making the person plead with Wu Chen to stop and asks him to talk things out. Wu Chen tells him to do as he says and he will meet him around 3 p.m. the current afternoon and he will send the address later to which the person agrees immediately. It's 3 p.m. in the Jin Fu group where everyone is present at the meeting of the board of directors as Madame Su orders to close the door and tells them to begin with the meeting. The board meeting begins as Su Ching begins informing them about the agenda of the emergency board meeting. She tells that originally it was just a small matter but since they have convened a board meeting so everyone is free to voice their opinion on this matter. She tells them to provide a logical reason for their disagreement rather than opposing just for the sake of opposition regarding the matter. This takes everyone aback as it was an open warning to everyone present in the meeting. 
Yao Honglin thinks himself fortunate enough to know about the situation in advance otherwise it would have been difficult to adapt to someone like her all of a sudden. Madame Su takes the lead appreciating her that she really impressed her today but it is not feasible to do so regarding the matter. Zhou De has been with the company for over 10 years working his way up from factory security manager to main office supervisor as he has always performed his duties with diligence and professionalism as he never made any mistakes. So, if they let him go just like this it would also discomfort the other veteran employees who have been serving the company for so long. Everyone agrees with Madame Su's remarks as it makes sense. Madame Su thinks that it is good as Su Ching has not contradicted her statements and the tide of the board has shifted towards her side so she continues saying that in the morning, Su Ching had said to let Joe to resign on his own and compensate him privately but he has the right to refuse. If they forcibly dismiss him, it might lead to arbitration and media attention by their competitors which might lead to fluctuations in the stock price. All the board members talk about agreeing with Madame Su as there is indeed a risk. Su Ching is fixated on the matter telling that it's futile to argue like this as they will not get to any substantial opinion so they should vote directly and tells everyone to raise their hand who is in support of her proposal. This makes Madame Su very angry questioning how dare she try to ask for voting but is stunned by Yao Hong Lin as he raises his hand in support of Su Ching. Soon other members of the board start to raise their hands in support of Su Ching. This comes as a major blow as all the important people stood in support of Su Ching. She is furious at Chen Lei as she didn't care about others but she had made Chen Lei join the company as a financial clerk after graduation from the university and it was she who promoted her step by step to her current position feeling betrayed by her. Su Ching tells her mother to stop influencing the votes in such a way and tells everyone to continue voting. Wu Chen had told her already that not everyone needs to speak up actively and some fence sitters only need to see her attitude and the display of her firmness and power and they will automatically follow the trend to support her. Su Ching thinks that she needs to be even more forceful in her words to grab their support so she firmly asks about who else supports her. This makes Tang Diang, the elder of the group and Madame Su's most trusted and closest brother vote for Su Ching. Madame Su cannot digest that even her brother has voted in Su Ching's favor. Kang Diang tells her that Kuang Ying has grown up and even she can see how she has become. Madame Su fumes in rage as she slams the table with both her hands getting up labeling it as nonsense. She tells that they have only 9 votes and not the majority votes yet and she wants to see who else dares to make trouble for her. We get to know that the board resolution requires two-thirds of the majority votes for major issues while a simple majority vote is sufficient for ordinary resolutions. Since the meeting was held for a minor issue, Su Ching needs one more vote for the win. Su Ching now deploys her tactics slamming her hand on the table and drawing everyone's attention in the meeting towards her. Since Wu Chen had previously said her that the key is not about controlling the board of directors but about making her mother give up so the final step is whether she can achieve a decisive victory or not. Su Ching knows that it's time to enter into the final step of her plan and questions her mother whether she is sure she wants to go on with the voting. Madame Su tells her that she is going to do it the same way and she isn't afraid of anything and since she is her mother, she can still control her. Su Ching tells that she may not vote in her favor as she is the chairman's wife and so everyone listens to her. But she cautions her mother that it is not in her own interest and for the Su family's and the company's best interest and tells that she hopes that Madame Su will think through the matter clearly and what exactly she is trying to do. Questioning her, Su Ching asks how long she intends to become a laughingstock in front of others as a family. Madame Su is stuck in the realization that if she doesn't let Kuang Ying's proposal get approved, there will be huge internal conflicts within the Su family from then on and even the board of directors will split into two fractions which will result in an internal strife in the company and thus leading to poor business performance. The company stocks will fall even more as Su Ching will have no hope to succeed the company which will ultimately result in the bankruptcy and collapse of the company. This makes Madame Su realize her stance as she walks out of the meeting slamming the door shut close as she cannot accept her defeat. Su Ching takes the lead questioning the rest of the directors present in the meeting on who else wants to support her and who else wants to oppose her. Oh.
I've been stuck in my way, stuck in my way, stuck in my ways. Smoke a lot of haze, pay is getting it is, but I won't ever change. I've been stuck in my way, stuck in my way, stuck in my ways. People start to change for a little change, but I don't think it's strange.